What is good, Valorant enjoyers? Welcome to Cebu Esports Arena. My name is Forward. And my name is Novati, ladies and gentlemen. And we will be the voice of the battlefield for this afternoon's amazing set of Valorant matchups. Eight teams from eight different places in Cebu. Four action filled valorant matchup that is on store for us this afternoon and later on this evening as well so nobody are you ready actually ward i'm kind of kind of nervous i mean we are up for an exciting set of four matches today between eight places in cebu province and i think it's bound to be an action field day as we head up onto the matches today yeah exactly that's what I'm really excited for, I mean, the same reason why you're nervous is the same reason why I'm also excited here, nobody. I'm ready to watch some amazing Valorant gameplay and cast it as well. Get deliver the best content possible to our audience. But of course, this event would not be possible without our wonderful sponsors, Virginia Food Incorporated, Bio Agronica, Bunin, Omega, and Dos Amigos. Thank you so much for making this whole event possible. Now... Nobody, before we head into our Valorant matchup this afternoon, I know that's what everyone is waiting for now, but I want to point out some stuff real quick that is game-changing in terms of competitive Valorant, okay? This, of course, is the Valorant division of the Cebu Esports Arena Invitational, and we're up for some more amazing Valorant professional matchup because it is it is a tournament held of course by Cebu Esports Arena so I want to talk about some changes that happened in Valorant the game itself that would greatly affect professional play in terms of strategies skills and maybe even the difference between winning and losing okay so we're gonna be talking about two patches here in Valorant most specifically the two most recent patches that we've had that is patch 6.11 and patch 7.0 giving a lot of changes into the game and how the game is played overall so first of all changes in the map pearl i mean they removed a few things changed a few things up uh, can you like give your thoughts on on the new pearl uh orientation as it is right now you know, I think the new Pearl is making the map a little bit more fair to both sides. I mean, especially the multiple location updates, you know. the uh, mm -hmm. One of the more, uh, more clear changes that they've made is the one on B ramp, where you can see where it was just formerly a ramp. But it's yes. now there's some sort of box where you can just, where you need to actually jump onto it making uh, rendering you very visible to the enemy team who is going to be looking at the b bomb site and for uh, speaking of b bomb site there's actually a rat spot near the mm -hmm. usual usual bomb location for uh, a plant for b ramp there's now a in halls actually i think it's called halls there's now a rat spot there for a couple more defensive plays or even aggressive plays that both sides might think of during the game but yeah, that is that is true there, nobody. And there's something though that kind of also counters out that rat spot when it comes to at least at least pistol and eco rounds. That is the nerf of the shorty. What used to be a very, very powerful uh pistol weapon that was quite frankly annoying to play against with, especially during pistol rounds, eco rounds, and then these players just hiding in rat spots, shortying everybody. Well, we may see a little less of that because of the changes once again in patch 6.11 wherein the reserve ammo from the shorty was reduced from 10 to 6. The price increased from 150 to 100. That's a, 50, uh, that's a double the price of what it was before, no? The damage at no fall off was adjusted from 12 to 11 and the damage at first step fall off was adjusted from 8 to 6. So basically a huge nerf towards the shorty and just... Unearth the rat spots as well during pistols and eco. So th uh, that nerf is actually going to punish uh, players who like to camp in one spot or rush through smokes and carry a shorty. Especially during eco rounds, we see this very prevalent in maps like 
maps with corners where you can play off of smoke, such as Pearl, example, Pearl in B-side, uh, in Ascent, in B, there's also a spot there for a smoke shorty push. And just adjusting the price from 150 to 300, that's going to impact a lot of the economy play for both sides of the teams that are going to play any map actually using the shorty because now the shorty is a little bit less efficient than what it was before compared to what when it had it only had a price tag of 150 and the damage it does right now is not not really that low if you're like point at point blank range but if you're like seven meters just like in the patch notes seven meters away uh your damage is gonna see a significant drop compared to what it was before and i think that makes the shorty a little bit more fitting into the game of valorant where you need to it's an fps right so you yeah. need to you need to be able to play off angles and not just uh, camp in a spot and get the free kill exactly and then also uh, that changes kind of like gives you the consideration no do you still go for the 300 cred shorty that can only do good at extremely short ranges or would you just stick to a classic that does well in both close with its right click and mid range, right? And it's free. So that right, means right. you can buy possibly a light shielded pistol or some other utilities that you may need. And that gives it some point of consideration to our players as well. Some more notable changes into the Valorant from Valorant 6.11, of course, is the nerves to Viper. Now, yes, before yes, we true. talk about the Viper nerfs, let me talk about the pick rate of Viper in, in the professional Valorant tournament. In the Brazil event, Viper was picked third with a 40% pick rate. Of course, with a 100% pick rate on Icebox. On the event after that, Viper went down from third to sixth with a 41% pick rate. But I think the reason for the reduction of that pick rate is not the nerfs yet. They played a patch before the nerfs in that tournament, but rather the removal of Icebox in the competitive queue. Because if you look at it again, Viper had 100% pick rate in Icebox when it was in the competitive queue. That's just how reliable, that's just how useful Viper is in that map. And with that map gone, the use of Viper has been greatly reduced. I guess Riot still thinks that Viper needs to be less used in the competitive queue. So they hit him with some nerfs once more, which would reduce rege the fuel regeneration from 5% to 3.3%. And the regenerate to max fuel once empty from 20 seconds to 30 seconds. That's a 10 second that's a 10 second difference there, nobody. That's life and death. Victory and defeat level of difference there. Yeah, that's actually a very huge difference for players who are accustomed to ha playing Viper and especially playing off her smokes, her walls, her orb. And there are a lot of players who have managed to s synchronize or put the the you know the time the time counter for a, an orb or a smoke into their mind so much so that this new adjustment. This could be kind of debilitating for some because their muscle memory is going to be impacted by this. Their strategies, of course, are also going to be impacted by this. The reduced regeneration per second is what is killing the Viper pick rate right now. You know, actually, in the statistics for last patch, it was... No, not last patch, but last episode, mm -hmm. episode 6, Act 3, Viper is only picked 2.7 percent of the time oh wow and she oh she's only had 1.1 million games compared to uh, uh let's see another smoker brimstone brimstone is actually brimstone is the top pick uh last episode mm. six act three with a a pick rate of six percent and matches played of 2.6 million matches which is twice twice the amount of matches the second pick the second most picked agent is, which is Phoenix. I think that says a lot about the meta of current smokers. We've got Brim being a some somehow much better pick at certain maps compared to Viper when Viper still had a 5% regeneration rate. 
yeah, it's definitely gonna greatly reduce the the pick rate on Viper in that one. But also talking about Brimstone, the possibly the reason why he's picked more than Viper is that he has three different smokes as compared to Viper's one smoke and a wall. Now some can argue that oh, Viper's wall can count as like three smokes as well. It's really long. But the thing is, you can't put it on different sides of the map. There's a limit to where you can put Viper's smoke. And in terms of lineups. Brim also has a multi in terms of post plant abilities. Brim has his orbital strike, which would be in some form of maps, in some maps, and in some skill level, would definitely be a better choice compared to the Viper Spit and the Viper Skit in general. So I guess yeah, that is that is a that is a probable reason why Brimstone was picked more than Viper on the last episode. But the thing is, when it comes to pro play. Greatly reducing uh, the, uh, the capabilities of an agent can greatly affect a player, especially if they're a one-trick player. So let's look at the case of Chamber. So many famous one-trick Chambers back when he was in the meta, and then now that he's now that he's nerfed to the ground, well, look at this. The most famous Chamber is a free agent. Yeah, you got <laughs> the game. second. The second most famous chamber user is not even on the last major event. He was dropped. And it's, it's just a little sad to think about as we look at the stats for the Brazil event. Chamber was 17th out of the then 19 agents, I believe, with a 2% pick rate. And in the Tokyo event, Chamber was 19th out of 20 agents. With a 0.89% pick rate. The only agent below Chamber in both of those events is Reyna. You know, that's kind of that's kind of painful to hear, actually, coming from a Chamber main. You know, mm -hmm. he, was, he wasn't he was just nerfed to the ground. He was nerfed below the ground all the way down to the seventh layer of hell. Like, <laughs> it's, not, it's not even... It's not even a discussion anymore. He is very nerfed his trademarks have been nerfed his rendezvous especially is one of the most common talking points when you talk about chambers nerfs and his tour de force oh my goodness mm. from from a from a martial operator kind of like uh, amalgamation now it's like it's like a very very superbly slow operator but mm. recent changes got uh in patch 6.11 actually got him a 15 yes, percent speed but it's not enough to bring back the chamber that we all used to know, love or hate him. The mm -hmm. chamber that, you know, just pops out of B mid in a set, I mean, bind <laughs> is gone. That chamber is gone. Exactly. That chamber is no longer, but maybe, maybe we might just see some chamber in the Cebu Esports Arena Valorant Division Invitationals because he has been buffed in 6.11 with, like, the mentioned. Fire rate increase in the 34s, the disable range of the trademark increase from 4,000 to 5,000, the speed to arm the trademark reduced from 4 seconds to 2 seconds, and the rendezvous increased. The, the weapon equip time was decreased, actually not increased, from 0 0.7 to 0 seconds, which means it's now automatic. As soon as you TP, you have your weapon on hand, you can shoot, you can eliminate those who are in front of you. But... It's still not the same chamber as you mentioned. I mean, it was, in my opinion, as also a former chamber main myself, it was really an easy nerf to chamber when he was dominating, right? The first one was, of course, reduce the speed of the 3rd force, which they did. Second one is, I don't know, reduce the maximum bullets, or at least increase the cost of the headhunter, which of course they did as well. But the thing that I didn't understand in terms of nerfing this sentinel agent is by removing his kit, his only part of his kit that makes him a sentinel, right? The trips, the the thing that lets him hold flank, the thing that lets him hold sight. That's what a sentinel does. They removed one of the two. So he only has one trademark. And then they reduced the... Incre the range and then they also increase the arm speed which makes it so confusing in terms of balancing an agent because why 
He's a sentinel. Why remove the only thing that makes him a sentinel? Exactly, exactly. You're correct, uh, forward. You know, uh, back in the day when he had two trademarks, uh, what, what we would do was place one trademark as a holding spot in a certain place in a map, and the other trademark is reserved for, like, aggressive smokes. Uh, mm-hmm. This is only a- applicable to when you know the enemy team is going to play off their smokes, and they're very, you know, very good at getting results from it. So what we usually do is stay near a smoke and uh, put a trademark inside the smoke, either before or after the enemy notices it. Either way, you can get info through that using two trademarks, too. Mm-hmm. So you still have one that can hold the site, and you have another one to check if an enemy is inside the smoke or whatnot. But now it's only reduced to one. Now, despite being ha- having a range of 5,000 units, it's still not as, you know, it's not as effective not as two trademarks. And, and it used you know, to be global as well. You, yeah, anywhere in the map, global. it would trigger. Anywhere in the map. But, right now, it has a very, you know, limiting, limited. limiting area where yeah. you can only use the trademark. But the uh, the arming speed, you talk about the arming speed, right? It's mm-hmm. it's a good it's a good uh, buff to, exactly, to chamber. Exactly. I'm very I'm very happy for the arming speed because even even if it's only one, if for example you're an attacker and it's a it's a one v one scenario. And your enemy opponent is a, a smoker, like let's say Omen or Brim, and you want to check a smoke, but you don't want to face check the smoke, right? Yeah, so yeah, it's dangerous to face check a smoke. Two seconds is already enough compared to the mm-hmm. four seconds before. I think that's a step in the right direction to getting Chamber back. In- that was actually also discussed by by Sean Garris, right? One of the one of the great heads of Valorant, former professional coach as well. He discussed the difference between the two and the four second arm speed using an example from a pro play wherein a player put the trademark outside of smoke, just you mentioned earlier, to check if there was an opponent there. But since the arm speed was four seconds, the opponent was able to walk past the trademark into a rad spot wherein the trademark would not spot him at all. And then obviously the trademark didn't trigger so the player thought that the site was clear. He pushed through the smoke and he got bodied from the back because the trademark didn't equip fast enough. Now, if it was in a two second rather than four, as the opponent walks past it, it would trigger and it would alarm and hit the opponent, making them aware that there is one. The air past the smoke so they can just back off or maybe push with a blind or something and not waste utility. But again, four to two seconds very good change it's a good step to making chamber balanced and not dead right uh, it's a good step on saging chamber <laughs> your duty is not over or something <laughs> for for chamber <laughs> yeah i see what you did there howard <laughs> yeah it, for, exactly for chamber, i think chamber uh chamber needs a little bit more than the mm-hmm. the trademark change i think personally personally you know it would be amazing if the old rendezvous is back. You know what I'm saying? Mm, just have yeah. it uh, reduce the range or something. Just, just please give us two teleport uh, modules or uh, nodules. What you yeah. call it? Two teleport spots, please. Not yeah, just two teleport one, spots because one is so crippling. It's like a jet dash, basically. Two at teleport this point. spots is just right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it's please like a jet dash. Please, Riot, give us two teleport spots and two trademarks, please. Because Chamber is supposed to be a Sentinel. And with the release of the newest Sentinel in patch 7.0, maybe in future tournaments, Chamber wouldn't even be picked at all. It wouldn't even cross your mind. Because Deadlock is here. Though Deadlock would not be played here in the Cebu Esports Arena, our Invitational Svarant Division. Still, coming down the line, of course... Deadlock will be introduced into tournaments, and this will be game-changing as well as we look at Deadlock's kit. That is really, really interesting, to say the least. I mean, if you look at this, the ultimate of Deadlock. That's just it. I'm not even going to say anything. I'm just going to say the ultimate of Deadlock. That's it. (laughs) It's just crazy. It's crazy. uh, The name is... You know what, what was the name? name? Howard? What is it? What is it? 
the name for Deadlock's ultimate is Annihilation. That uh. says a lot already. Mm-hmm. Like when you hear the word Annihilation, you, you know something's bound to happen. You know, mm-hmm. it's it's just a very at at this at this point in time, it's kind of unstoppable, kinda because people aren't very familiar with how to deal with the Annihilation. But it, it's it, you actually just need to shoot the cocoon. Yeah, I don't know exactly. if it's the official term is cocoon, but it, it, it looks, looks like, like a cocoon. cocoon. You just need to shoot the, the cocoon problem is your a cocoon. Teammate. Yeah. <laughs> and but you know what? One of Deadlock's most more annoying, more annoying skills is the barrier mesh. Have you encountered this uh, forward? Oh, definitely. Uh, the first time I encountered the barrier mesh, I I wasn't familiar. So I walked into it. I was like, what is this? I know I've read the patch notes. I know I've watched the trailer. I know this is like not good. But like I still didn't know how to walk around it and I just got hit with a race nade and I was I was done for. But okay, we're heading That's into one our of agent the sil- most annoying <laughs> skills of deadlock actually. Yeah, I I mean at least we're or not gonna see it one today. Already? Yeah, at least we're not going to see any deadlock today as we head into you're game right, number one right. with the agent select. We're going to see Argao versus Liloan here in the map Haven, a three-site map. Valorant, one of the only two three-site maps of Valorant. And we're going to see the agent select here. We only have one locked agent as of now, and it's Spain with the Sova. Oh, now Shiv locks in the Omen as well. Nobody, can you give us a quick little rundown on what what is the ideal team comp when it comes to Haven? You know, for Haven, uh, most of what I see in uh, pro comps, they usually have Omen. Like it's kind of a very must must pick for Haven. I'm not sure if it is right now still, Choose but a Sova agent. is and an Omen. Like that's two of the core components you need mm-hmm. in Haven because Sova, there's a lot of dart spots which you can utilize for to scout enemy positions and for omen he's just very useful like for example in a site you can teleport up heaven or you can uh in in c site you can teleport up the boxes in b site you can yeah. teleport up the uh huge square box in the center and for sova sova is just overall a very Simple to use, but hard to master agent. Mm. That's what I can say about Sova. And But once you do master a little bit of Sova's kit, like for example, the darts, most especially, that's his especially trademark. Especially the darts, yeah, the, uh, the lineups. It's going to be... Yeah, the lineups for the dart, they're very useful in gathering information. It gathers info bet way better than almost any other initiator skill in the game in my opinion exactly and with haven being open on sites a and c no roofs in that you can easily master a lot of not only darts to show where the enemy is but darts to stop the plant as well as we head over to the by face for our round number one we'll find out how they play with their sova their oh is this a mirror comp actually i just realized is it a mirror comp? Oh, it is. It is a mirror comp forward. Oh, we're going to be we seeing, seeing some diffs two here. Beaches, two killjoys, omens, jets. Yeah, this is going to be one hell of a match, man. I think I think mm-hmm. both teams are, you know, in the, in their mind, in their mind already they're like saying uh, I need to be better than that guy. I need to be better yeah. than my mirror. This is going to be a firefight, ladies and gentlemen. A mirror matchup here at CEA Invitationals. All right, as we begin round number one, I believe we have uh, Argao on attacking Liluan on defense. We're looking at an A push here towards Long as D&D already takes damage with a low HP there, but the Bridge Concuss does catch them. The Shock Dart will come in. That while not take up the deal, but Nebi will be able to take him out with a shorty there. I mean, uh, a ghost. But then here we go, the darts that we were talking about earlier. Scan's confused. And then he takes out Nesca, who was low in HP as well. Raid Boss taking out Jellal. Shiv taking out Hyrule Plant as well. Now it's a 3v2 situation. Shiv getting into a gunfight with Nebi, but Nebi taking him out. And a plant will go in for our attackers. The location is revealed, though they know exactly where he is. Pain taking out Neeb from Hell. And Raid Boss coming in, taking out DZ. 
with a successful retake for our defenders going in for the defuse is raid boss what a first what a quick first round there nobody yeah that was a very quick first round actually did you see the kill feed like three players almost instantly dead once they entered the site this is a very good defense coming in from actually nebi and raid boss having a very well coordinated defense to hold this site for round number one look at this nobody just round one mind games already just waiting having the spike and then just you know putting a turret knifing around going back and forth and then before actually fully diffusing it quick mind games from our defenders here yeah it's correct and now they have the uh option to pick up either a specter or save up because this is round number two this is uh, uh beforehand you know in the old days you won't buy anything for this but in the current current state of the game i think buying in round number two is a better alternative than saving up money for the gun round which is usually uh round number three yeah exactly but we do have a timeout going on here to see if yeah they're using a timeout to get the, the reconnects going on make sure that their players are already in the lobby and is with good ping good fps all that uh but that was probably the reason why kj didn't immediately defuse earlier it wasn't it wasn't any form of taunting or anything it's just that they wanted to give the defuse to the sova possibly with the very useful sova ult in in attacking with us with its post plant capabilities the the i am the hunter you know all that stuff uh but the sova wasn't there they might have disconnected and so the KJ was left no choice but to defuse the spike on their own, but I believe that was the case there. That wasn't any form of taunting or anything. I guess it was just a form of a disconnect, an unfortunate disconnect for our defenders here, which is Team Liluan. So they will be using their one minute pause or timeout to get the reconnects going on. You know, as they are take, you know, taking their time, taking their time, I hope they come back. Uh, let's talk about the the sova like before mm -hmm. before they got disconnected the sova the sova dart was uh, no the sova shock darts actually used to take out din dindi am i pronouncing the name right dindi it it was jet so, yeah. near a long yeah that was that was one example of good utility usage from mm -hmm. argos argos jet I, argos sova i mean onto liluan's jet because that that oh the, uh prompted the jet to go for another position but here comes but we're already uh, here in Eve play already on a, a site coming from the timeout already yeah, heaven ready. already He's taken over by nebi now it's a 3v5v2 situation here it's a quick little retake i mean a quick little take from the attackers here and now it's a 5v2 retake between our say our kj and our sova but this is still pain. Just reconnecting into the game. Raid boss taking out GC here, but gets shot from the back by Hierophant. Now it's a flat 4v1. It's up to pain with a Spectre on hand. He takes a quick 360, but gets taken out by Nesca, and that's a 1 to 1 lead. That was a. They, they basically started the round, but we'll still in the castle stream, but it's okay. We, we Gucci. It's all good. It, it happens sometimes. But we take a 1 to 1 game. Tackers with a quick side take. Taking Heaven control really quickly. And just basically taking site control fast as well. You you remember I talk about how Omen could teleport up onto a heaven? That was what happened earlier. Just as you know, right as we got back into the game, Nebi was already in a heaven, ready to pick anyone who was trying to get into a position for a heaven. Yes, that was exactly it. That was the really really. Very capable ability of Omen here, but we see a quick little C take here, of course, an aggressive push towards mid by the defenders as well, but they didn't spot anyone there. As the C long push was up, Dindi taking out Nebi here, it's a 3v3 situation, going for the retake. They have a side control, the spike Ooh. is down, Pain 
with a shock dart on hand, just trying to get anything. A raid boss up in CT, they spawn DZ, then D Dow low on HP, pain half HP as well. Raid boss grabs a sheriff, will retake this engagement from C from CT side, going to the boxes. The shock dart will come in, does not hit him though. Pain takes out Hierophant with a shock dart. The raid boss with a clean headshot towards Dindy, and now it's a 1v1. DZ very low on HP. Can he win this round? He cannot. The spike will Ooh, be defused by raid boss. Raid boss, you know, that was quite an amazing play. An actually decision for raid boss to get the share first before engaging and being patient exactly. with the Sova because the Sova was uh, putting up a shock dart onto C Link and he was patient. Uh, raid boss was patient enough to wait for the shock dart to land and, you know, not reveal his position too early. And that was, I think, what won uh, raid boss the round. His patience and ability to position himself. Uh, so much so that the Sova would be flabbergasted when he saw him uh, in the, for the first time. Not only that, nobody, but the prediction on where the shock that would land as well. A shock that was thrown at him, he noticed where it would land, sidestepped to avoid getting damaged and getting chipped there. But the engagement from A site early, Nez got taken out Dindy with a little bit of a jet lift there early into the round as they push towards the A site. Once again, it's an early 5v4 here. The utilities from Hyrofrant will go in. They will slowly push into the site here. They are already taking C long, A long control. Three players down in the main. And then KJ flank towards the mid area. KJ versus KJ towards on B there, nobody. But confused holding the A side as well. They will try to slowly peek into the site. But Raid Boss here not rotating just yet. But he knows something's up. He's a little sussed out by this. But Hierophant already up in sewer. Trolls in an aftershock to push out Bane. He takes him out with a headshot. Now it's a far 5v3. Ooh, an easy down. take towards the A. Nebi gets caught in that concuss. Gets flashed as well. He gets taken out. And now Nebi will teleport back into heaven. As we saw earlier, no one suspects a thing. Raid Boss pushing in towards the site for the retake. Towards the smoke. The plant will go in. It's a 4v1. He takes one out, but it's 10 HP. The flash goes in as well. Hyrofrant taking him out. It's a 2-2. Two -two. There wasn't really anything much that Raid Boss could do there. He only had a Spectre and is up against a Breach, which is notorious. I mean, very notorious in 1v1 situations because that that flash is nearly, nearly undodgeable. I don't know if that's a word, but it almost cannot mm -hmm. be dodged. It's just Yeah, insane. but also... One thing, one more thing there, nobody. Even if Raid Boss were able to take out the Breach there, that would be... Still not look good for him because he has no idea that Nebi was already up in heaven and pushing towards CT area. But the round begins once again. The Recon Bolt doesn't really attack anyone as get destroyed early into the matchup. But does that, that does give information that there is someone in the mid area and Raid Boss takes advantage of that, taking out Nebi from B towards mid. And now it's a 5v4, the drone. Bane will come in. He wouldn't spot anyone here. You know, he spots someone from a B window and it gets spammed, but you're able to get into a safety. Nezka Nezka was just that was a lucky shot on the Nezka to detect him, but Nezka takes down pain, so that's that evens out the mm -hmm. altercation in mid earlier. We all have Raid Boss holding C side is up against Irofant. Irofant does has his does have his ult up, so this could be a burst push, if ever, for Team Argao. Yeah, we see it happening here as Asova slowly walks towards the Pisa as well with Breach. The, the raid boss is holding showers though, I mean garage though, and Confuse rotating as well. I think they know what's up. I think the push will come in, the Sova darts come in as well. Nesca pushing in towards TT, taking out raid boss with a quick wall bang headshot. He's gonna go re peek the side again, but he gets taken out by Dindy. It's a 3v2 situation. Hyrule Flat, not Spike Plant yet, gets wall banged here, but he's still alive. He gets the plant down. He will throw in an, a shock here. Try to push out Dindy. Two players from Garage peeking him out. Shiv low, but able to take out the breach here. And now the defuse will come true. I believe the KJ is not here? Question mark? Stuck at spawn. Oh, this and the defuse is very true. unfortunate. Yeah, this is very unfortunate for Team Argao. Nice, uh, I think there's going to be a pause coming in for... Uh, Team Argal because that was very unfortunate to have two players supposedly two players in a B four was it two v three scenario which they could have managed yeah. but the one was right AFK here. 
So this was... is gonna be another timeout, technical timeout. Yes, that was that would have been a very very winnable round for them as well as one the spike was planted for long, which could have easily held. Two, Shiv was about twenty five h uh, twenty five percent of his HP remaining, and three, of course. Killjoy, very notorious for that post plant utilities in terms of the nano swarms. So that much, that round would have been winnable, I believe. But the AFK has returned, and I believe the play will continue now as we head over to the buy round for our round number six, three to two in favor of the Liluan team. Here's Dindy. Dindy's up in a very Sussy spot there. You can see him uh, posting up on sewer, but Nezka will be heading Here. towards C Saito. It's gonna be Raid Boss versus Nezka. Let's see who will take the first pick of this round as they head into round Not number six. Here comes Nezka. Not only Raid Boss versus Nesca here, nobody drone. has. It's the whole Argao team pushing it towards the seaside. Nesca taking a Raid Boss Ooh. early into the matchup. Now it's a 5v4 situation. That was a clean headshot, by the way, from Raid Boss. I mean, from Nesca towards Raid Boss, but the plant will come in very easily for them here. The retake will come through in a little bit, but they're watching flank. The CT area crowded with three people here. One in garage as well. Nebi teleport teleporting out of there. But Dindi trying to spot anyone from long spaxes and kills Bane through the smoke as the detect was done. But Dindi and DZ just battling it out, taking out everyone else, and it's a 3 3 situation. That was a very confusing round. It was a very confusing round, especially if you factor in the omen. What omen did did not only confuse the players, but confused us as well. But that yeah. was, to me, that was kind of a genius move because the Omen teleported, used his ultimate, and managed to gather information that he otherwise could not have had had he not teleported. And that's the genius of Nebi showing in round number six. But we're now on to round number seven here to the start. It's confused. Oh, Dindy. Dindy's going on the offensive here, Howard. Yeah, it's an aggressive push for Dindy here. Bladestorm in hand only though, but Nebi takes him out early. Ooh, very very, very quick shutdown by Nebi to Dindy. For but, it. Yeah, exactly. But the thing is, he only had a Bladestorm. No gun really lost there. That was uh, a quick push, maybe trying to get someone. I believe this is an eco round for them. I'm not entirely sure. We're not seeing the gun buys here. There is no tab. But the thing is, the push will come in towards the A site now as the engagement from B in mid falls over. Nesca taking out Raid Boss, taking this into a 5v2. Will, be, will we see a flawless round here? The push towards the site continues as the plant goes in. Nesca takes out Pain as well. Now it's confused, left alone, dazed in, confused. But he spots out Nesca, taps him out from the air like he's bird watching. But now the turret comes in. Jello jump speaks. But Hyrofan already there Ooh, with a van. Breach diff. Breach diff. <laughs> yeah, that was some sort of breach diff, you know, in there. The two players uh, played it really well. Uh, Nezka and Hyrofan played it really well to not to try. No, Jello actually. Jello and Hyrofan played it really well to not overextend. And just use enough utility to bait out the breach from uh, Liloan. Yeah, exactly. But now the round goes in once again. It's another A push for Team Liloan here. And I believe that this Nano Swarm from Raid Boss will delay their push. But now the. Oh! Something going on? <laughs> I'm sorry, we're having like technical stuff going on here, but the push will come through. The game is going still, and now it's more towards the A side here, but they might rotate off, but Raid Boss from the back, taking out Nezka, their duelist here, it's down to a 4v4. Both Jets are down, Raid Boss from behind, taking out TZ, and now he spots Nebi. Nebi down, half HP, Pain hits him with a wall bang, but Raid Boss, has 10 HP as well, very low here. Very dangerous for Raid Boss, but it's Hierophant going from the back. It's a 4v2 situation. Spike is in hand for our Argao team. Will they be able to push through with this? It's Raid Boss here up in window. Pulling out the utilities. No one knows he's there. Hierophant 
Might not be checking corners. Jello out there as well, not being able to trade just in case. But Raid Boss does get taken out, and now it's Hierophant and Jello walking towards the A side as well. But Shiv already in sight, already up in heaven, trying with a bulldog here, trying to stop the push. Smoke comes out. Jello will be pushing towards this smoke. He spots. Shiv from heaven and the stun comes in from Breach as well. But there's 13 seconds left. The Sova ult comes in. Hierophant taken out by that ult. They don't have a spike. Now they do. Now the plant will be going in. Four seconds, three seconds. The flash comes in. The pla the plan is out. The gunfight goes, but it's Jello falling to Shiv, giving our defenders another round. Four to four. It's a close matchup here, nobody. Yeah, and you know, if luck had favored him uh, with Jello, had, had had only Jello managed to hit at least two shots to the head, to the breach, that would have been a different round. But alas, luck is just not on Jello's side during that round, ladies and gentlemen. What an amazing hold, actually, from the Sova to try and time his ult just right as they uh, opted for the plant. And we are seeing a tied matchup now. As you are kind of in a rocking back and forth scenario between Team Argao and Team Liloan here. But both teams are showcasing uh, extreme amounts of patience, especially with their controllers. And mm -hmm. their uh, smokers are very, you know, very adamant in holding sights. Another thing from that round, uh, nobody that we can take notice, the communication between the team of Li Luan. As Shiv was holding heaven, he had info that they were there. He heard the plant going on and then just communicated to Sova for that run. ultimate to come through. But speaking of ultimates, this lockdown will come through towards the A side as Jello and the rest of the crew tries to push towards A. Jello throwing in the Nano Swarm. Nesca and the rest of the crew though is in the B side. Raid Boss trying to stop the plant from going on from C. But he walks past Nesca and Nesca punishes him for Ooh. it. ZZ will be planning the spike. It does go in. Confuse is now confused. But he's able to take out Hierophant and Nesca as well. Even oh, being detained too. just like that. The, the recon dart from Pain will come in as well. But that will not spam. And catch Last Jello though, and ZZ taking out Pain with a little quick Sova Def. Dindi versus DZ. The scan will come in. He knows exactly where DZ is. But Dindi with a quick jump, draft, headshot, trick shot to win the round and get the defuse. What an chaotic round number nine. Ladies and gentlemen, what was that from Confuse? Like, he was already detained and just blinded, actually, for the second kill. Still managed to get two kills for his team, and eventually, with Dindi, they won the round in that 1v1 after a, you know, a, it's kind of a showy updraft. Updraft mm -hmm. 360, did, I, did we see a 360 there? Yeah, updraft I don't know. 360 this over. It was some straight up. 20, what, 2010 COD stuff? Speaking of COD, there will be some more COD tomorrow, yeah. COD M, so you better stay tuned for that, like and follow the official CEA Facebook page. But Hierophant bird watching, taking out Bindi with a quick Vandal shot while he was in the air updrafting. Now it's round number 10 here in Haven, and the push towards the east side is what A side is what seems to be going on here. Shiv holding on to this rat spot though with a phantom on hand. Will he be able to take one out? We'll find out later as Jello and Raid Boss once again up in B with a jet. I I mean, Ray, KJ Diff uh, engagement here. The drone will spawn out Nezka. Blade Storm and up on hand. The Shock Dart goes up again, hoping to do some chip damage, but Nezka just flies above it. Now it's still towards the A, but they're looking more towards a possible rotation here oh, as Jello. We get into engagement with Raid Boss. He doesn't check it at first, but Raid Boss somehow doesn't win that gunfight. Jello taking him out. Shiv takes out Hierophant though to make it into a four. Oh, what a headshot! It's now a 4v2. That that shot just that made me stand up. Standing. Confused taking out two people again, but okay. now it's Jello left alone. Standing. Taking out Shiv and Confused, clutching that round for the attacking team. You can see the chaos in that round was very well managed by Jello as he was able to take down, get a 3k actually from that round, holding the site pretty well with the utility and just overall being in the right position at the right time to get the, to get the round win. This is a very, 
very close match of Valorant. But as we move over to round number 11, we'll see that our defending team, Team Lee Wan, is on here. Going up against Rifles, they have Sheriff's Marshals. But that doesn't matter to Dindy as he takes out Neb with a one-tap head shell with a Marshal. The concussed does come in, preventing the, st the scope in from Nezko, no. But Shiv, all the way towards the seaside, he doesn't know that Jello is here, but Jello knows because he made some noise. And Jello will be checking the backside, taking out Bane, and he gets taken out with Shiv. Shiv very clean with the Sheriff here. That's the second clean one-tap Sheriff that he did in two rounds. Dindi, again, a beast with a Marshal, taking out Nezko as well. The Jet Def once again coming in. It's now a 3v2 scenario here. Hyrofant and Dizzy. I don't even know how you pronounce his name, but they are looking to take the site and plant the spike and take the round. It's gonna be difficult as we're gonna be seeing a crossfire here. C and B, but the flash will come in. Dindy doesn't really spot out anyone there with a scope in operator, but the gunfight from Shiv will go through. Hierophant will do a quick trade though and grabs the spike. Dindy misses the operator shot, but the contest will come in. Dindy gets taken out by Hierophant as well. Oh, that's a Marshall, not an operator. But Raid Boss, already who wears the B-side, Lockdown is ready as well. The plant will come in. Oh, the jump bait! Baiting the noise, making it seem like he's going to garage and it's working. Hierophant looking at the garage area here, but he doesn't it's know working, that Raid Boss is working. on CT. But he, he has an intuition. It was suspicious. But now he's looking at this. They take the gunfight. Hierophant wins that and it's a 5-6. In favor of our attackers, Team Argao. You know, that was actually a pretty smart move from Raid Boss. If only, if only had he, you know, made his way faster to the site, he could have caught uh, the breach off guard. And I think that's one point of improvement for Team uh, Lilo Liloan. And, you know, that round pretty, was pretty much a 50 50 for uh, during that situation. That was a really smart move baiting out the garage jump, but just not quick enough. Like you said, not quick enough to take out the breach there. That was quite unfortunate. The round will go on. The game will go on. The push towards the seaside will come through. The Tobadar will scan someone and it will cause a gunfight towards the back of the side. Shift pushing through the smoke blindly gets taken out, gets punished for it. And now it's Nebby left alone in the backside with a quick round. What a quick round. 6-6. Six, six. There was a quick 3k Switching from Pain, sides. actually. Did you see that, Howard? It happened so fast that I didn't even catch it. a uh, 3k. It happened so fast that I didn't no, even catch it. was a quick 3k it. from Pain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was, that one, was a... You know, that would won them the round. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Exactly. That was a really quick... Quick 3k from Pain here as we head over to the next half. Team Liluan will be heading towards the attacking now, and Arga will be shifting towards defending. We'll see how this plays out as it's a 6 to 6. Raid boss and the rest of his crew to attack. They're looking towards a garage to seaside push. And it's really diverse towards the mid now. They're walking towards the beast side here. It's easy with that old orb coming in handy, as we mentioned earlier. The help of that Sova ult, but Dindy already taken out Hierophant and Confused taking out Jello, making it into a quick 5v3 situation as they move over towards the seaside. Nebby tries to hold side, but that's three people only gets to take out one. That was he wasn't even aiming at the person that he elim eliminated, but now. The site is on the attacker's side and they will try to plant the bomb, but Nesca Sheriff in hand gets taken up by Raid Boss though. It's a 5v1, Ooh. 3v1 as DZ taking out one with that shock dart. Ghost in shock hand or towards C Long. They're all playing post plant though. This is gonna be difficult for him. It's planted for long as well. Three versus one. How will he be able to win this? find out in a little bit as a dart will come through from Pain, hopefully trying to scan him. No, does it go through with it? Pain half HP though. And ZZ tapping the spike. The concuss comes in. The dart comes in. Everything comes in. His 10 HP and is out at 7 6 in favor of our attacker, Steam Luan. Yeah, how do we say the Sova's name? DZ or Z? Is it? Is it DZ? Is it? Yeah, no, let's just better. go with DZ, honestly. <laughs> We can confirm with that yeah, probably in the future. Could do. 
Exactly, exactly. Yeah, let's confirm that. Yeah, we can confirm that for the next game, Snow. But for now, we refer to it as DZ. If it's not DZ, then we apologize. We just collect correct ourselves in the next one. But for now, it's more of a sick uh, C push here by the attackers. Then the rest of the screw. Nebby concussed, blinded, scanned, blinded again. Oh my God! And now he's dead. We love Valorant. We sure love Valorant. But now. Raid boss taking out two is a 4v3 situation now. Confused going in for the plant. Hierophant do have some low HP. Z as well. 34 HP that shocked dirt. Almost taking him out there, but he jumped away from safety. Nesca taking out Bane with those classic. The concuss will come through. Hindi takes out. Oh no, it's confused. It takes out two with a collateral. And now it's an 8 6 for team. I believe it's Team Liluan in attacking, right? Yeah, Raid Boss and the rest of the screw, Team Liluan. But come on, our Gao. I think it's our Gao in the attacking side. Right now, right? I think, I think it's, I think it's Liluan, no? We can check. Can we get confirmation? Oh, uh, anyway, the site will come through. Nesca taking out Dindy here and towards the B site. And the dart will push through. They will be going towards the site here, but this is going to be a tough engagement. There is a smoke. Nesca does get spotted, gets spammed, but doesn't really get taken out. It's a 4v5 situation here. They're looking towards to rotate because it's, it's going to be a hard take. B is a very crowded uh, site with the smoke up in there. And we'll see how how this plays out. Nezuka is waiting in the window of garage. And I think he managed to get one kill onto doors. So that's one good thing out of this round for Team Team Liluan, ladies and gentlemen. As Team Argao is now going to try to make their way onto a site, but we have a Sova in waiting in sewers. Let's see what Confuse does. Confuse has been spotted by the kill the turret. The Concuss will now have to be popped. So here's the aftershock. Easy. Easy gets one. But Shiv takes him out of the equation. Shiv, however, is getting a running low on HP. That nano the swarm. Nano swarm. 55 HP. Jello. Take it out of the engagement. Jello just Shiv. takes him out clean. <laughs> Jello finishes the job for. Team Argao. We we do like to apologize, no, if if there are like some roughness in the casting, we are getting some delay in our in our communication. So it it might it might not be as perfect. So from from the rest of the crew, apologize. But we're doing the best. We're doing the best, right? Oh yeah, we're doing the best out of the situation, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, the round we comes in on once again. Number 16. 8 7 in favor of our attacker is Raid Boss and the rest of his crew looking for a more A side push here, but the turret does go into the B with a little lurk here. That's something that we've been seeing from our Sentinel players, especially in the Pro League, when they take the lurker role in terms of, of, of attacking. Yeah, that's what you usually see in the pro plays, and you can see the quality level of play for our Cebu players here is now a little bit up on par with what you see on the official Twitch channels of Valorant. It's just this just means there's a bright future ahead for Cebu esports, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly, that is true. There, nobody. It is a bright future for Cebu. Especially with Sipu Esports Arena in play. But now the side take goes in. Dindy takes out Hyrofat and Rainbow taking out Nezka as well. It's a quick 5 3 situation here. And now the push towards the A side will be complete as the plant will go down for our attackers. 30 HP on Z. Up in heaven here. Sheriff on hand going up against rifles. Not really that ideal here, but the plant from Nev does come in. He does blind two people. But then the there with the crossfire, the smoke comes in as well. Now Nebi, does it. There's two people here, but Jello takes one out, confused from the back though. Now Dindy taking out Nap, that good crossfire going for them, but the headshot 
I mean, the body shot towards Z, taking him out. He was low on HP. Tries to get the headshot with a sheriff, but failed to do so. That was quite unfortunate. You know, there was a, there was a very, very, you know, well-maintained, well-held round for the defenders. But then again, it's one of the, the moments where the attackers are just way too slippery for you to catch in your defenses. Let's see if that thing will change in round number 17. Oh, that was a quick takeout for the Nene from Nesca. Pain, though, with a quick trade to Jello. Now it's a 4v4 Pain, however, situation. They force... A push towards the mid side here, but they're still not going for a full push. It's just a walking towards the B side. But Payne here, the rest of the crew grouping up. The smoke will go into garage, preventing a push for that side. But they're looking to a B side push here, not a garage. The arrow does not scan Z. They have no information about him being here, except now because the drone gets popped. Raid boss gets spotted. But now they walk back. Trying to go for a retake, rotate here, but Neb up in garage, throws that smoke once again, making it harder for him to get pushed, as they have to push through a shallow smoke towards the inside, which gives Neb an advantage. If they dry push this, it's not gonna end gold good for them, but we'll see. Spain just sits, takes their time, there's the crew as well, pushing back, waiting for the prime opportunity to strike. As Herophant slowly walks towards the seaside here, Shiv as well. Going for this garage take. They spot out Nebby with that dart. He gets caught with a TP that still fails to go anywhere. The ult from Breach comes in. Hyrofrant tries it with a counter flash, but he gets wall he's taken out by Pain the clean headshot. Now it's a 9 to 7 with a spike going in for our attackers. Left alone is the jet going towards the CT area. Garage. But the KJ is clueless. He's looking towards the back. He's looking for the flank. The sage is walking towards him. He does not have an idea. Now, Nezka walking towards the side. He gets spotted by Raid Boss and he's out. 10 to 7 with another win for our attackers. That was a very sneaky play from Nezka, but, you know, sneaky, being sneaky does not always net you guaranteed results. Just as you can see, Raid Boss was very observant during that sneak from Nezka which landed the round for Liloan once again. They are now in the lead, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. I think this is the largest lead we have seen in the game so far. Three round lead for Team Liloan in the game. Yeah, it's slowly snowballing the lead here as soon as the attacking side for them came through. We can see their dominance in attack. Their defense wasn't half as bad but their attack is, is the clear Site that they prefer is at least, at least in terms of Haven as a map because they're just dominating this attacking side, not even le only letting their opponent score one round. As Spain once again gets the plant, and it's a 5v5 retake though for Team Aragao. And I think they might be able to get this one, but Tindy taking out Nesca already with a quick jet diff there. Shiv low on HP as well. Z classic in hand gets caught with a blind. He doesn't know though, but Pain. Gets hit and is low, and that was a clean, flawless round by our attackers here. Pain almost falling to a classic, but they were able to save it. You know, there wasn't really much they could do with only pistols, but the proper positioning, the proper utility just landed them a very, very uh, easy round for Liloan. And now we're up 11 to 7. A four round lead for Team Liloan, ladies and gentlemen. Dindi, however, does have the knives. So let's see what Storm is. Yes. Gonna be DZ. Has been spotted. Has been stunned, ladies and gentlemen. Dindi comes in the dash. He's got to go with a quick Nezka operator kill towards Bane. But the lockdown done. will come through for our attackers here. Now it's a 4v5 situation. As nobody mentioned, it is a four-round lead. Two away from game, one away from match point. As the blind goes and confused, Dindy dashing in as well. The lockdown will detain one player as they push towards the side. Tries to spam through the smoke. The shock dart comes in as well. Nazca trying to spam that operator. Doesn't really get anyone. Now it's a 5v4 and they try to retake, retake the site here. The plant still have not gotten in. They still haven't been able to go to the A site. 
but Nesca low in HP up in heaven there. The spam through the smoke will go through as they try to rotate towards a different side take here. B is already populated already though. Raid boss and the omen and so they might be rotating towards that, but Shiv is also towards the backside of A. The smoke goes in towards heaven. The plant will the not go through? No, they gave the spike. And Shiv will be teleporting towards the seaside where Raid Boss is already waiting. What a smart play here for the team. The retake will go through though, but Raid Boss falling quick. The plant will go in for the long. The blind will go through as well. The stun and everything goes on. But still, Shiv fails to defend the site. The defuse from Hierophant will go in. The jet, Dindy, nowhere to be found. And it's a defender round, 11-8. Making a quick damage to the economy though, taking out Z there. But still, wouldn't do much as it already snowballed. But stay, they still remain in the game. They still are not match point. So there's still hope for our Argao team here. As they battle it out against Liluan, 11 to 8 in favor of Liluan. Game's not over, ladies and gentlemen. They have another chance to turn this one around. This is round number 20. And we can see that both teams now have guns. This is the gun round. Another gun round, actually, for Liluan versus Argao. And I think this is going to be a slow push towards the B site. Four D taking out Liluan. Raid Boss really early here. So Raid That's boss. the Sentinel gone for them. That's gonna be an easy uh retake for the post plan for them because the, the utilities of the KJ is no longer there. They can no longer watch flank. It's gonna be a difficult round for our attackers here. The stun will not get anyone, but this prevent the push from going towards the garage area of the map. The drone will come through. They're not dry peeking this. The drone clears it out. The aftershock will go in but does not take anyone out. Dindy here smokes, dashes in towards the side. He gets scanned by the recon ball for a quick second though. He gets blinded. Smoke and everything is thrown at him. Deska taken out confused and pain but that round goes to our defenders. 11 to 9. They're still alive. They're still kicking. Okay, my arms are good. We can go. Yeah, that's what I mentioned earlier. That was the point, turning point for this game for Team Argao because they managed to hold that site pretty well. Nezga, even with the operator, managed to get at least a kill during that entire debacle in C site. There was a lot of utility being pushed and being used, but Nezga held his ground and made a couple of kills which rendered his other teammates to get the round win. Exactly, but now as the game begins, the start does come in. Scanning two people at least pushing in towards the A side. The smoke will go in towards A heaven though as they slowly push again towards the A side. The operator from Nesco taken out, not taking out anyone, but he does fall into half HP. The smoke spam comes in as well. The, the, the Sova dart will not detect anyone though, but Nesco looking at the sewer area. Aim down site with that operator as pain and raid boss will be going in that engagement here they're slowly peeking it they're not pushing through with it they know there's an op yeah. towards the a side no and way. they know that it's not in long anymore which means that it can be in sewers net raid boss tries the wide peak but gets taken out pain takes out as well d and hierophant with the ultimate now it's a 4v2 confused going in for the plant jello left alone here along with neb as they try to retake the site the what is this? This is gonna be the smoke from that coming through as well. Hoping to get someone there. The Jello taken out. Confuse and Shift taken out. Neb. Now it's a 3v1 as Pain takes out Jello and the attackers will take it into match point. 12 to 9. Match point. You know, those are very well coordinated round for Team Liloan to get into that A site even with the entirety of the utilities is just pristine coming in from team liloan to be able to get through that entire site get the plant and get the kills post plant as well yeah exactly that was a, a little bit of a tough tough round there but now it's match point now we'll find out if there's a victor or not yet but the push will go in towards the mid area of the map Enemy here Le neb 
once again left alone guarding the garage area of the map raid boss will get scanned for a little bit there but they know that it's a mid push so question mark oh they're grouping up they're getting off of the window area up towards grass and now they're running towards the a side here as the engagements go in the going falling back for the rest of the crew just watching the flank for a little bit there but now they're going for an a push here the swarms will engage down in the sewer area of the map and they will be pushing towards the a side currently it's a 5v2 but sova coming in for the rotate as well going through ct the smoke will come into heaven jello already here in the b dindy will smoke will dash but does not check the corner and is taken up by hierophant hierophant gets one as well but pain with a two trade now it's a 3v3 raid boss and z with a clean trade to his now it's Raid Boss left alone in a 2v1 situation. Match point as well, but Neb takes him out 12 to 10. Team Argao stays alive in this matchup. Are we possibly going to see an overtime? Because that the thing the the way things are going currently for for Team Argao, they are playing really well enough, just enough, you know, to actually might actually get an overtime round for this matchup but let's see it is a highly possible uh scenario in this matchup as both teams are highly skilled it was an early back and forth and maybe snowball was just something that the other team was doing wrong but now they're trying to fix it and now it's a 12 10 situation and now they're trying to push in towards the mid or actually it's a split push going on here nobody they're trying to slow things down they have been trying to rush in the past few rounds it worked earlier but i believe the argal the defenders already saw it coming and they were able to stop that henceforth making the score from uh, I believe an 11-7 to now a 12-10. But the drone will come in as well towards the garage area of the map. Doesn't really spot out anyone. They push through that smoke put in by Shiv. And they know that no one's there. They're already in. But the defenders have no clue that they have already penetrated towards the garage area here. And this might not be good for them. Neb still looking at the mid area in B. And Jello even has a knife out on the C side here, but Raid Boss will spot Hierophant, takes him out, the Alarm Bolt will come in towards the CT area, the Sober that will scan him though, Nezga knows where he is, the all from Sober coming in as well, Nezga with a two shot from the ult, but gets taken out by Shift, now it's a 3v3, Nev regrouping with the rest of his crew before they go for a retake, but no, as the attacker is going for a rotate here, going to a different side, their duelist is actually already towards the pawn area of the CT, then they looking for any rotations here giving the rest of his crew a free rotate into the seaside but Ten they have little left. time nine seconds remaining in the clock the tp will go in seven seconds six five the One plant will go remaining. in it's a plant for long and hopefully hold the post plant as well but shiv is left alone nev is left alone and dindy once again stunting on the opponent with the updraft blade storm kill and that round end game is for Liluan. Congratulations, Liluan, for uh, for winning and taking the first game of the CEA Invitational's Valorant CEA Invitational's Valorant uh, League. Right. We will be going into a quick break, however, to fix up some technical difficulties that we've been having. Uh, we do apologize if it's like there's a delay if me and nobody are overlapping and stuff like that we are experiencing some technical stuff that is out of control we are doing our best to deliver the best content to everyone watching so we'll be right back after a quick break we'll see you in a bit
Okay, okay, I believe we are back here once again in Cebu Esports Arena. It's more Valorant action. Once again, my name is Forward and... I am nobody. And we are the voice of the battlefield for these afternoon. What a first matchup we had there between Team Argao versus Team Liluan. Started out really close, but then we have a snowball. But then we had a comeback. Then Team Liluan just wins it all the way. What a great match in terms of story. The scriptwriters really did well on that one. But we're here. We're back. Hopefully the technical issues were fixed. But if not, we do apologize. It is on the side that is not our con in our control. Uh, there there are some delays, and and it is not on our control. It is on the the broadcast system that we use. Obviously, I'm not gonna drop any names, but uh, it is what it is. We go through. We try and deliver the best content possible to you guys with whatever we can do. Right, nobody. Yeah, we'll try to do our best to manage these uh, situations at hand. But now let's let's talk about the previous game before this game. Uh, Howard, did you did we did our talk talk about the composition uh, relate more towards the flow of the game? I mean, yes, definitely. We talked about the capabilities of the Omen teleport in the map Haven, and we saw a first round immediately. Omen just hits a teleport towards heaven's side. And we talked about how useful the Soba darts and the Soba scans are in terms of the openness of the ANC side. And we saw it happen as well. But now it's Team Talisa versus Team Ming Lanilia here going up against each other in the map of Split. And we did see a mirror comp last game. And it's looking like we're seeing another one here as well. As the race has been locked in by Marky and Sasa. Not Chris and Bun hovering the Jets. Drebs and Monster are hovering the Sky. But it's Micro here with the Omen instead of the Asher just being hovered by Curbs in the role of the controller. Tongs as well hovering that Cypher in terms of the Sentinel. Now we're looking at the... Uh, we're not looking at a mirror comp anymore here with these hovers. What's the best composition, in your opinion, for this map, uh, Novity? Essential to this map is either a Cypher or a Sage. That's a must-pick for this map. And a Jet. Just in my opinion, based on my experience in ranked games, uh, they're very, very annoying to deal with in this map. But if you have <laughs> a Viper or a Brim, that could also come in very handy for Split. Because, once again... Split is a very defender-sided map. This has been a problem since day one of this map. It has been very defender-sided. But some teams are able to make it work. Some are able to throw down crazy scores, score lines, uh, even uh, even with ending at an attacker side. So let's see. Let's see. This is Team Talisay versus Team Mingla Nilia. Mingla Nilia, and gentlemen, yes. This is... Uh, Second match of our CEA Invitational's Valorant Tournament. Yes, sir. And Split, also a map known for its capabilities, as I say, to make and drag matches into overtime. Split has been putting players, has been very difficult for players, putting them in very long matches as of late since it got re-added into the game actually but now we'll see a quick little push here towards the a side actually it's a split push here by our attackers team talisai with the cypher cam Let's looking over towards there. the a side yep <laughs> now they're working towards a middle slash b push no a push okay they're working towards the a push not chris here not really seeing anyone in the mid side of the map they are rotating. They're taking the long walk, the long rotate here in this map. And they are moving slowly but surely towards the A side here. They don't know that Sasa is here though. Gets in the engagement with Tongs. Tongs taking him out. Now it's a 5v4 situation. That raise is gone. The grenade going up towards Seven as well. Doing some chip damage. Plant will be going in for Team Talisai. And now it's a retake. 5v4 
5e4. Cypher is low on HP, though. Curbs all the way in hell, walking towards the Rams area of the map, backing up the Cypher here because he is indeed low on HP. Macker is going for that flash. He does a blind bun in the site, but Dreb's taking out Tones now. It's a quick little retake here. It's a 4v4 scenario. Buns pocket spotting up Drebs and not Chris taking out curbs as well, but Bun with a quick trade. It's a 3v0 1 0. Attackers win that one in a very, very nice first round here on Split. You know, it's one of the rare times I see that there is no sheriff on the Jets. Like, it's the first time I've seen that in a very long time for round one because I've mostly in my games I've usually see Jets always pick up the sheriff and maybe ask their teammates even to drop them a sheriff and they get an armor but for this matchup I don't think they've done that so we're headed to round number two as they make a push towards the B site with Bun yes, in the lead indeed the beepers will come in and now spotted. it's not Chris with a sheriff in hand but Marky taking out two before he gets traded out by Dreb Bun here down as well. Drebs falls to short, Shorty Monster. And then it's Tongs taking on Micro. It's a 4v1. Sasa left with that Sheriff in hand. He does get caught with a blind here. Shorty Monster and the rest of his crew trying to save and stop this guy from pushing into the side. The boom ball will take chip damage though. 45 HP. Three, four players speaking him. What can he do there? He falls to curves. And that's another round for our attackers. Yeah, you would need a miracle to actually win that round with four players looking at you at the same angle. Yeah, exactly. Or maybe if you just eat Virginia, you'd you'd be able to win it. I don't know. Virginia, of course, one of the sponsors making this event possible. Joined by Bio Agronica, Muning, Omega, and Dos Amigos. Thank you so much for making the CEA Invitationals possible. We head into sure, round think, number uh, three as well. Here, as the push comes in towards the mid side of the game, it's it's a split push. It's a split push on split. Of course, it's a split push on split. But we are looking towards an aggression in the middle, though. Jeb's taking out Bun, but gets traded up by Shorty Monster real quickly. It's now not Chris peeking with that Vandal in hand. Doesn't really get anyone. There's two players there. He has information. The heals will go in. Micro taking out Curbs. He gets swung as well, but it's Micro taking out Shorty Monster. Now it's the Cypher left alone in the 4v1 situation. He has a Bulldog and takes two people out with just two clean headshots. This Bulldog is really, really a powerful gun. Especially on eek around, he does pick up a bundle here, but now it's up for Makers and Sasa here. They're pushing in, they're grouping in towards each other, but Tongs has to spike. He spots one out, he wide swings, but he gets taken out by Sasa. It's a 1 to 2 in favor of our defenders. They score, Milanilla scores the first point in the matchup. You know, that, that pop and swing that could have worked, possibly, uh, that should have worked, actually, just in my opinion, but. You know, alas, sometimes luck is not just just not on our side. It's not actually just luck, nobody. As in the patch 6.11 of Valorant, they also read the accuracy of both the Vandal and the Phantom while you're moving. And as we witnessed, he wasn't at full stop. He was still at the strafe while he was trying to shoot, and he was punished with the reduced accuracy of the the weapon there and he just falls that would have been a really amazing play there especially because the race wasn't expecting the wide swing but alas he wasn't at full stop and the, the rng was not on his side did you see the lineups from the cypher i think that was very interesting a cypher lineup it covered ramps and yeah ramps uh, and ramps i believe and... heaven no, not heaven. Uh, oh, oh, it was a near, ramps near in the A side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe I saw that one on TikTok as well. But the push will come in towards the mid heaven side. That was a little bit of a team flash going on here. Drebs is hiding inside the smoke. No one's checking him. He swings out. Takes one. Takes two. And knowing for a third. The ult does miss, it's 15 HP, but Tongs from the back taking him out. Sasa, the rest of the crew trying to retake here. Songs taking out Micro, and now- Oh, what a grenade lineup, chucks it in. Taking out Tongs. 
Getting their second point is Minglanilia. You know, that dude hidden in the smoke, they could have gotten uh, another kill, possibly if he had only checked the stairs. But alas, we get what we get in these games. <laughs> exactly. You know, the, the thing that made him so successful was also the reason of his downfall. No one checked him in the corner. That's what he got too. But he didn't check his own, and he just got eliminated. Oh, look at that. The camera from Cypher. The lineups again. Here comes the lineups. CZ, that's what I was talking about. The ramps and that certain oh! area. <laughs> but he gets spotted but by Micro. Mm, he spots so many, so big of an area with that cam. But he just doesn't spot that one area where Micro was hiding with the judge. Not Chris. Taking out curbs as well. Taking out another. Oh my god. A quick crown for our defenders. Not Chris. I believe with two drebs with two as well. And uh, the Omen taking out one with Micro. Of course taking out one with that judge. What a clean round. He picks up a, a Phantom as well. Now they have rifles. Oh he's giving it to. Trading it for Vandal. Okay. That was a good little quick uh, show of teamwork there. Hey. Grab my Phantom. Give me the Vandal. <laughs> So we're now heading on to round number six. We have uh, guns on both sides. So this could be very interesting because the jet, both jets also have their knives up. So next round yep. could be, you know. Very interesting as well. Knife the fight. stack coming in towards the A side though. The spam through the smoke doesn't really get anyone. But still it's an A stack push here for our attackers team Talisai. The dog will come out. Does not see anyone. Micro, once again, in a rat spot. Someone needs to check their corners. The, the blind will come in. The pushes as well. Bun dashing into the side. Taking out Sasa. Marky back with him. Taking out not Chris. And now it's a 5, 4v3. Micro gets checked and gets taken out by Tongs. Now it's Drebs left with the sky here. Going in for the retake. The boom bot does not clear him. He does have the lockdown in hand. Looking to put it down, but doesn't go for it. Marky, low on HP though. Cares. Going for that blind does get the information that someone's there, but they don't know the tongues is towards the A main area of the map. There's four people watching the spike, one in the main area. They're not really grouped up here. Dreb swinging, but gets taken out by Buns. Makers, though, with a quick trade. Now it's a 3v1, because Makers left alone. The blind on hand gets the flash going, but he doesn't have much time left. It's a 3v1. Bun. Trying to push in, trying to get the gun, but he doesn't really spot him. He sees two though. Oh, time to get at least one. The spike will go through, and that's three to three. It's a tied game here for Team Minglanilia and Tapisa. Another close game of Valorant here, nobody. You are seeing a very similar storyline uh, compared to our last game. This is how last game started as well. The scores were very even, very close. The match, uh, the rounds as well were very close to just a little bit of discrepancies here and there. But still, uh, this is round number seven. And both teams have still have enough money to buy a couple of rifles. All rifles, actually. Yeah, it's a gun v gun round once again for both teams. But now it's another stack on the A side of the map. Makers doesn't really scan anyone with a trailblazer. Noted that Tongs' tripwire was placed. Oh my god, this crosshair. Just gonna hit the shoulder, put it a little bit to the left, buddy. Put it a little bit and get the headshot. And now they're pushing towards the south. Bun takes out Night Chris as well. It's a 5v3 now. The dog doesn't really spy anyone. Clears out the start. The grenade goes up towards the heaven. Boombot clearing out CT area as well. Jabs will get spotted by that Boombot. The plant will go in for curves. That was a clean, patient push here by our attackers. Drebs now trying to get the retake. He's getting damaged left and right. The Nano Swarm will go in, hopefully to prevent someone from pushing him, but that doesn't do anything as Tongs and Bun cleans up with a flawless round for Team Alisai. You know, Team Talisai just showcasing a different kind of animal when it comes to uh, attacking the sites right there. You can see the de the post plant defense coming in from Bun and Tongs. That was a very magnificent uh, showcase of what to do during a post plant scenario. Yeah, the patience as well from these attacker side is really, really 
it's inspiring, you know. But again, again, look at this. The trip wire from the cipher here is just a little bit higher that you can't jump nor crouch through it. But it's also high enough that the trailblazer actually doesn't trigger it. It's one of the most annoying things playing a cipher, you know. All your utilities get broken down. Everything just gets scanned by your trailblazer. A sova drone, a dog, a boom bot, a gecko. A prowler, anything that walks basically breaks your trip. And having that, oh, your crosser is a little high, but that's for a jump peak as he does make damage of Makers here, but doesn't anticipate Sasa. He peeks and he takes out Marquis. Now it's a 4v3. They lose one of their duelists, but they still have two. The Boombot will try to clear out Garage Area. The smoke as well going down for them. Not Chris. Still holding A side here, maybe hoping for a rotation, taking someone out. But it's still looking like a B push for our attackers here. 4v5 though, and Mackers is low on HP. He does get someone with that blind sheriff in hand as well. The dash from Bun, he gets caught, he gets blinded, hides in the smoke, peeks out, takes out Mackers. Now it's a 4v4. They do have side clears the corner. He takes out Sasa as well. Tong's taking out Drebs, getting that ult as well. He knows exactly where everyone is. Buns with a 3k now taking out Micro. And one left alone. Not Chris. He spots Tongs. And now it's a 3v1. They push him out. And it's Bun with a clean 4k. And a round for our attackers. 3 to 5. You know, how was Bun still alive during that round? I mean, Saksa, Sasa, Sasa or Saksa was already spraying him down from uh, B site. But I don't know. I have no idea how Bun was still alive. Then managed to get the 4k to close out the round. That was just amazing skill coming in from Bun. Barely even taking damage from Sasa when he was crutch spraying him. That's just some some blessed RNG right there for Bun. Not taking any bullets at all. Making it a Neo from the Matrix move. But the push will go towards the mid side once again. It's really important to take mid control in this match map split. As it's one of the key rotations for both attacking and defending. Uh, it's, it's the fastest way. It's... It's the, well, it's the easiest way as well. But if you have mid control, you can really make it difficult for your opponents here. But once again, they're taking this slow, which is a little bit different from the attacks that they've been. The attacks that worked in the past few rounds, wherein it was fast push towards the A side. But now they're taking it slow once again towards mid, regrouping there. The two players from A walking towards sewers as well, looking for a B heaven push here. But we'll clear out the ropes area of the map as they push, clearing the corners. That's good. But Sasa has a grenade in hand. As soon as someone makes a noise, that thing is getting thrown. He gets caught by that trailblazer, I believe. The smoke will come in. And now it's the rest of the crew slowly walking towards the A site, coming back, walking towards the sewers as they cannot really penetrate the. 30 seconds. It's Sasa. About to be the main duelist here for their team. I mean, no, not Sasa. Sasa is holding up heaven for the defenders here. Bun making some noise. The baiting, actually. The lockdown from Killjoy. But not Chris. Having a read that the opponents are here. The dash is activated, but Tongs takes him out with a headshot pushing from the smoke. 10 seconds left here, but the plant will go down. Sasa, 150 HP. He spots someone, but he doesn't really get the chance to fight. And now, Team Talisai. With a clean attacker win once again, only losing one. Tal Team Talisa's attacks are just atrocious. I mean, not atrocious, but very furious. You know, in a sense that yeah. the team teaming Lanilia almost couldn't have any answers uh, against it. But let's see, the game's still not over. It's still three to six. And it's going to be an eco round for Ming Lanilia. Let's see if they can pull off something. They need to pull off something, actually, for this round. Yeah, exactly. They need to bring it back. This was a back-and-forth matchup earlier, showing that they can really fight and have a close game here. But now it's just Team Talisa taking over the matchup. It's now a three... It's now a three round lead and three more rounds they will take this half by 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 last night 9-3 of course but still they're trying their best it's an eco round for them shorties and sheriffs and pistols in hand this is not gonna be easy but it's still a, a split push a split push and split by our attackers here which 
I don't think would be the best play here. They have the gun advantage, and by splitting up, it makes it easy for their opponents to take them out one by one and isolate the gunfights, just like what happened. Now they're down two players, even though they had the gun advantage, and that's a rifle for Sasa. Now, uh, now it's Marquis again falls. See, they're, they're so far away from each other, not making it easy to trade. Even if they have the guns, even if they have the weapon advantage, it's going to be difficult for them to trade off of each other if they're playing very, very far from each other. And now it's the Sheriffs and the Blade Storms taking them out. Makers is 5 HP and the Trailblazer will go in, but still, it's a 4v2. Curbs taking out Makers here. Sasa has a rifle in hand. Curbs will go for the plant. Short team Monsta is up in heaven. If he doesn't get checked, it's gonna be dangerous, but the grenade will go through. And now it's Curbs falling to Sasa. It's just one player left, and then they lose their what seems to be the eco of their opponent. Just because they played so far from each other, not being able to trade each other. That was an unfortunate mistake here done by a team Alisai. And Team Minglanilia pulls off a thrifty, ladies and gentlemen. Just what I was talking about earlier. They need to pull something back into the game, and they did just that, have uh, uh, lowering the lead up to two. Yeah, Down that's right. There, nobody. Rather. Yeah, that's correct there, but uh, not not to discredit Team Minglanilia here, but like like I said, like I mentioned, it was it was more on the mistake on the Talisai side of things, which Milanilio was able to take advantage of and actually win the round. But still, being able to take advantage of that, seeing that mistake done by the enemy team and taking advantage of it, winning the round, still full credit to them. They did amazing that round and now it's a four to six. The ult will come through for Astra. The, the showstopper will go online as well. That doesn't really... Oh, never mind. I was going to say Ooh, it's not really bro. the smartest... Yeah, it's, I, I was going to say, it's not really the smartest thing to pull, especially the Astro Wall. But no, he just gets one. And it's a 5v4 already. They lose their controller. And now it's going to be a difficult retake for them as Marky just takes out Sasa, who gets punished by pushing through the wall. Same here with not Chris. The pull goes through, preventing the push here from Drebs. He does pull out the third, and he gets taken out by Marky. Now it's a 4-7 lead. That attacker is taken back once again. That was a very astig round coming in from <laughs> Team Talisa. You have seen the the spray down from I think it was Curbs holding. Yeah, the it site, was Curbs. The Astra, right? It was Curbs. Yeah, yeah. Holding the site and managed to get at least two to secure the round for Team Talisa. Curbs playing an off angle there as well, managing to take out anyone that pushes through the wall because he's not in a common angle to check. He's in an off angle and he just gets free kills but now it's more of a b push leaning in towards here with dongs going in for that lurk on towards the a side but micro watching mid the blind doesn't get anyone i believe so they have no information for that marky and the rest of his crew checking out the b side here the jet has the blade storm on, but Mackers is up close with that specter it can be really dangerous it can really pu be punishing if someone makes the mistake of pushing through and not clearing him but marky just taking their time now the boom bot will come out macker is already towards the backside. the dash in from the jet the flash comes in as well Akers gets into an engagement takes out marky he gets shipped by that boom bot though he gets taken out by shorty monster the blade storm is gone i believe for bun he uses it all mostly now it's a 3v3 the ult comes in from cypher as well he knows exactly where they are and now the heaven retake coming in for the defenders minglanilia's not chris with a vandal in hand but the spray down on tongs though now 51 hp the smokes will come in for the asha i oh no 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 the stars i believe that's going to be a pull for the defuse once they defuse it gets pulled preventing them but not chris checking out tongs but the concast is a little late tongs is down now bun taken out by drebs and not Chris as well. Now it's a 2v1 situation. The race left alone. The Blade Storm comes back online. One Blade Storm left. Sasa. No gun. Nothing. Pulls up the showstopper as well. And that's about it for the half. 8 4. With the lead coming from Mila. Oh! Ooh. Engagements here. Losing <laughs> to a classic. The knife that's, miss. that's just painful. Losing to a classic, man. Come on. But it's okay. The round was over. It was the round uh, eight to four. Not the best 
but at least they pulled it a little bit, just a little bit closer than what it would have been. You know, with this scoreline 8-4, it may not be 9-3. We, we cannot activate the 9-3 curse, but 8-4 is still pretty much a very workable score in terms of Valorant. You know what I mean, Ford? Yeah, exactly. You know, we talk about the 9-3 curse a lot, uh, but I think an 8-4 is even easier to win because, well, you're one round closer. And they're one round away further from match point, which gives you a little bit of room for error. But now the push comes through as Sasa falls. I mean, as Curves falls to Sasa, the grenades will come through. Marty will get chipped there. The Nano's arms getting thrown towards the heaven as well. It's a 4v2. Bun from the back. Last player left. 4v1. Takes out Chris with a clean headshot. It's up for him. He can do something here, but he falls to Drebs without Frenzy on hand. Jumping, taking him out. And that's a win for the attackers. 5 to 8. Mingla Nilia trying to pull this back, getting momentum and credits early on to the second half. So they won the pistol round, ladies and gentlemen, and that's going to be a momentum changer for Mingla Nilia. Now that they have won the pistol round, they have an opportunity to either save or buy in round number two and possibly convert that to round number three. No, round number three in this half, I mean. Yeah, looking at it though, they seem to have forced the buy here. The dash comes in with a blind from Micro down in sewers. And that just allows Chris to take heaven freely. He sees... who he doesn't check Tom's though. Tom's is behind him. Tom's can get a cheeky kill with the classic here. But not Chris. He's a little bit suspicious about that. Watching behind him, the plant does go down. It's a 5v4 still. Chris taking out Marky. Still Tong's there. He doesn't get checked. Shorty Monster gets taken out by Sasa. Now it's a 4-5v2. Tong's... Gets checked this time and not Chris with a 4k. Flawless round as well for Team Minglanilia. They might just pull this off. And you can feel the confidence oozing from Minglanilia's jet because that, that was a very, you know, cheeky spot for a jet to be in. For you to be a jet and rushing into heaven to clear it, that's very risky but very rewarding as well. Yeah, but the thing is, they do have, like I said, I'm, I'm putting out, again, the amazing communications between our teams. It was actually off the flash of, of Micro, or, yeah, of Micro, that allowed not Chris to clear that out and have the curbs blinded and taken out easily in that fight. But now they push towards the B, uh, the mid side of the map, and it's looking a little bit more towards their side, the attackers, that is, as they just go freely onto heaven. But Shorty Monster has that blind, though. Marky taking out two as well off that flash. Teamwork once again showing now on this side for Team Talisai as it's a 5v3. Micro spots Bun, but he gets taken out. That's a little bit of a gun difference there. But Bun is down to 59 HP. They do have a heal from the sky, but that's possible. It's still a 5v2 situation here. Sasa up in heaven. Short Team Monster can get caught here. Mackers should not be taking this gun uh, gunfight here as he is at a disadvantage. Sasha gets blinded. He gets spotted out. That's two players pushing him and now it's Macris left alone. Spike is on hand. Has some time to rotate but Marky with a headshot Ooh. through the smoke. Check him PC. Yeah, that was that was very fishy, you know? Very fishy that his cursor just snapped onto the head like that but it happens. Nah. It happens. This is Valorant, nah. so you know. <laughs> are, are you are you disagreeing? Forward. Are we going to check him PC right now? Nah, no, 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 no check hims, no check hims. It's fine. It happens. I mean, it was they were, they did receive an information because he did before the smoke pop. Actually, he did see him crouch, and. He knows that he was crouching, so he just smoked through the smoke here. But Bun gets into engagement, doesn't really take anyone out. Those wall bangs are really dangerous in that corner. Not Chris and this guy up in mid. Marky with a phantom in hand, though. Very dangerous with this gun. Micro and the rest of the crew going more of a B side push. The KJ lurking towards the A. But the middle part here, they're not really clearing much of heaven. Oh, and now they do. The grenade does go up. And now it's Marky falling back. 86 HP now. He gets shipped. The Trailblazer does not see anyone. 
it gets destroyed early though so that gives off information that someone is there and the flash will come through the flash from omen as well and then another flash comes through and then the smoke from jet and then everything is just everything is going on at once shorty monster gets taken up by not chris it's now it's curbs catching someone on the rope it's a 4v4 quick trade there the dog goes into the side as well doesn't really spot anyone to walk towards the B side, smoking that off for clear, but Marky takes out not Chris and Bun gets rid of Micro as well. Drebs and Marky getting into gunfight. Drebs winning that one as well. It's a 3v2. Bun all the way towards spawn. He does have visuals on the spike. Mackers does not have a flash as of the moment. So this will be a difficult take for them. He now has a flash online. The flash will pop, but does not get Bon as well. They don't have much time here. Bon just has to stall. Bon just has to prevent them from grabbing the spike, which he fails to do. Now they're going, running towards the site. The pull comes in from Astra, preventing them from planting. And that's it. That's round. As long as they don't die. There we go. That's round for our defenders. 10 to 6. One step closer to victory. And you know the way the patience game plays out, played out, for Team Talisa there, it worked to their advantage. They were very patient when it came to engaging them. They didn't push. They didn't over push. They were just constantly very aware of the surrounding and the situation they're in, rendering the two players from Team Minglanilia to be very confused as to what to do, uh, causing them to lose so much time uh, before they could get the bomb back in possession. Exactly there, nobody. And that's the thing. The, the, the push there came through. And they were able to win that round very cleanly. But now Tong is taking out Makers here. And the grenade will fall. They push in towards the A site. And now they already have Haven control. But nope, Curbs takes out Sasa. And now it's a 4 5v3. Micro takes out Shorty Monster with a clean headshot with the Guardian as well. I love seeing Guardian kills in this game, man. I'm a Guardian user myself. And Guardian kills are just so satisfying. Especially if it's a one tap. But now it's a 4v3. Still really winnable here. Uh, Skurb takes out Drebs. Now it's a 4v2. Bladestorm is online, though. Now they're walking towards the B side still. Oh, man, with a spike in hand. Not Chris. Whiffing the oh, Bladestorms no. and gets taken out by Curbs. Quite unfortunate there. But it's Micro. Left alone, spike on hand, guardian weapon as well, but Tongs takes him out with a clean headshot. Curbs was 26 HP, one blade away. If if he just got hit by one more blade, that would have been an entirely different round. But now it's 11-6, three from game, two from match, one two from game, one from match. It's looking grim for Team Minglanilia. That was very unfortunate from not Chris to not be able to land uh, the last knife, you know. I see. Because if he had landed that last knife, round would have been very different. <laughs> exactly. That would have been... Oh my god! Drebs just taken out. But early into the matchup with the Bulldog. That's a gun upgrade for Sasa as well. Shorty Monster falling back towards the CTR of the map. Marquee falls as well. Early 5v3 here. 6-11. They're looking to win this out here as Sasa takes out Shorty Monster as well. Curbs though, taking out Chris and Sasa getting two of his own. Now it's a 2v3. 2v2 suddenly. This is looking great for Mili Nilia once again. There was hope, there was light, but then it's Macros versus Tongs. Micro from the back. Now it's a 2v1 situation. It's looking grim, it's looking dark. But we'll see if they can win this out. The TP towards the garage area. The plant is down. They have to play this out. 6 HP on the sky. Tongs, half HP though, he's low, he's one bullet away, 38 HP, the TP once again, he doesn't expect that, he doesn't know, he throws a shorty, but he gets taken out by Micro from the side, it's 11-7, they stay alive, staying away from match point, Mackers, 6 HP. Yeah, that, that, that shorty throw was kind of funny because we, I also do that a lot, it's, it's just, you know, you know the other game, the other FPS game, that utilizes mm. that me mechanic fake so flash. much. The fake fake flash, yeah. The, it just transfers over to Valorant uh, through some players, but it's not uh, as, ex as effective as it is on the other game. Shoutouts to Marlon Addo with the amazing fake flash one time. He threw a Vandal fake flash. A vandal to fake flash. Anyway, hey, hey. the round... It's pretty bossy the round. 
Yeah, it is. The round pushed through once again. 11-7 still. One point away from match point for Team Talisa here. Of course, Team Ming Lanilia trying to prevent that from happening. The mid-engagement as Marky takes out Sasa here. Now it's a 5v4. No, not Chris. Trading him really quickly here. It's a 4v4 situation. It's anyone's ball game. The lockdown will get invested towards the B-side. But there is space for Bun to no... Oh! Destroys the Nano Swarm there. Sees it coming. Now they push in towards the B side. North thing towards A, possibly? No. It's an A push. The Nano Swarm will take out Curbs with the Phantom here. But now it's a 4v3. Suddenly, attackers have the lead once again. The Flash will not detect anyone. Tongs to a gunfight, but gets taken up and not Chris. The smoke coming up as well to avoid backup from coming through. The blind will get bun. And now it's the sky left alone. 4v1. Ming Lanilia tries to stay alive, but surely Monster. Looking to win this for his team 1v4. What can he hear? Nobody will he be able to pull this off. Slowly walking in towards the heaven side. Micro seems to be checking. Pulls the knife out. That's not good, Micro. Get your gun out. But it's not Chris with a trade. Three kills for him. And 8 11. It can have truly monster. I think that was a pretty well placed bait. You know, have you just putting up your knife, acting like. You're very nonchalant about your positioning, allowing not Chris to peek out of the corner and secure the kill for Team Lanilla to continue their chase in this matchup. Yeah, honestly, honestly, that should be counted in as an assist. I'm just saying. The assist system in Valorant, I'm not a big fan of. Like, there are a lot of other plays that should count as this, but isn't counted. But hey, it is what it is. The blind comes through towards the side, mid side of the map as three players tries to engage. Vandal in hand for Nautkus, Phantom and Sasa. And now, they're pushing on towards the mid. Once again, rotating off, starting off slow and then going towards the side. But Macker spots out one from B side though. He doesn't know that there's two more. It's a 3-1. One stack here by our defenders, and now they must have noticed that as they move towards the A side. The cypher cam, the stag on Sasa, though, the setup is really clean here. It does get removed, and now the push will come in towards the A side. The grenade will be thrown, the satchel will be pulled, and the TP will be used. Tong's taking out Drebs, though, it's a 4v4 as Sasa trades it out with Marky falling. Now it's Tong's taking out Sasa, it's a 4v3. Micro falls, and now match point might just be on the hands of our defender here as they defuse, and surely Monster taking out Sky. That is Mackers with a little Sky death there. The defuse will come true as well. Will defuse the spike? I believe they're that trying to get it for very Cypher. Unfortunate very unfortunate for Makers to be in the position he was in heaven because had he been in another position, let's say in screens or in elbow, there could have been a different result. But it is what it is. There's just not enough ground to cover for Makers there. And he was up against a lot of players. So we are now heading on to match point for Team Talisai. This is a very crucial round for both teams. Talisai. To win it all and uh, Lanilia to stay alive in this matchup. The round push goes towards the A side. The flash does come in, but not Chris. Falls to curbs. The flash play didn't work this time. The spam towards the spam towards the cipher trip doesn't really get anything. Sasa though, just trying to check anything. Tongs gets sprayed. 70 HP. He sees Sasa. He takes him out. Makers util in hand, but he was able to pull back and take out Tongs as well. Not Chris takes out Buns, and now it's a 4v2, 4v3, v1. The attackers take it, and they stay alive in this matchup. Will we see an overtime? We'll find out as the next round will continue in a bit. Team Ming Lanilia is hungry, ladies and gentlemen. They are not ready to give up this game just yet. They're going to try and chase this 12 to 9 lead by Team Talisai, but will they make it through though? This is now round number 22. Both teams have guns and full util, if, I, if I'm seeing correctly. And we are now going to see if the strategies will be working out for Team Ming, Ming Lanilia. 
I don't know about you, nobody, but I'm feeling round 22. Will everything be all right? We'll find out as the round begins once again. 9-12 match point here for Team Talisa. If they win this, it's over for Mainland Lilia. But if they do fall, we'll continue over to another round. But Curbs here, half HP now, falling towards that. But also Makers get stacked as well. All the utility is getting thrown towards the screens area of the map. Meanwhile, the spike is still at main. They do have heaven control as far as the rest of the crew is concerned. They're all stacked in heaven now. Even the spike is up in heaven. A little bit of a questionable decision there, but they're making sure that everything is alright. Everything is clear, but oh, a little bit of a team flash. That's rough there. It's not going to be good. It's not going to be the best play for your team. Unfortunately, Team Thalisa is not, even be not even being able to punish that. They're playing this slowly. They don't want to lose just yet. They want to make sure that everything is all good. Fire in the hole. He just missed. Tongs there. Tongs not pushing out. But he's just going to do a blind throw here. But still, Tongs stays alive. 71 HP though. The plant will go in. Chose to come out to get any information. The spike will be planted. Chris holding up heaven. He gets wall banged. Tagged a little bit. The wall goes off for the Astra. The ult. Now, the showstopper for the enemy team pulls again, but not Chris, gets three, oh, and Chris. Mackers taking out two as well, cleaning up with an attacker win, staying alive one more round, it's 10 to 12. It's 10 to 12, and I think the economy for Team Talisa is at a disadvantage here right now. Can you take a look at the tab score? I think they're at a disadvantage. This is what I was talking about earlier with Team Lanilia not wanting to go down without a fight they are really really hungry for this win right here and it's showing ladies and gentlemen yeah but we're seeing a more aggressive side of Mingla Nilia here going for more fast pushes which I believe the Lisa did not anticipate oh this is a pure TikTok setup here by Tongs but they didn't anticipate that fast paced push from team Mingla Nilia as they've been just slowly pushing Ooh. but Tongs able to take not Chris out oh he just pushes through the nano swarm and falls for it Bond taking out Sasa. It is an equal round for Talisa, as you have mentioned, but they do have the lead. Making a reverse, possibly, of what happened earlier, if you remember correctly. They did lose to a Trifty from Team Minglanilia, but now they're trying to pull one of their own. The lockdown will get destroyed here. It's a 3v3. Micro holding hell. Drebs already in sight. It's now a 3v2 as Makers takes out Shorty Monster, but Curbs. And Marky still has hope here. Marky left alone, but Micro takes him out. It's 11-12. Milanilia still alive. You might be seeing an overtime here, nobody. Yeah, this is very... Now this is very, very possible for an overtime because the economy for the Rays on the other side uh, for Team Talisai is not really that, you know, that healthy because he bought a Stinger in the last round. He may have... He may have a uh, Vandal right now, but I don't think he has an armor yet. So this is debatable as to how Team Talisai could be able to close this one out or Team Magnanilia will show their grit and get into overtime. It's looking like they're pulling a Fnatic here, uh, Cassie. Uh, nobody. Not buy, no, I think not to buy armors, but Rifle instead, not Chris! With a Ooh, check in PC moment! Well Clean headshot through the wall! Now it's a 5v4 already. Minglanilia looking to stay alive, looking to pull us through overtime here as they move towards the shower area. Chris falling back towards mid though. Sasa taking out Curb. Now it's a 3v5 and they're looking like they want to end this into overtime. But Tongs taking out not Chris. It's a 4-3 now. Alt online was him as well. Tongs taking out Sasa. Now it's a 3v3. He has an alt online but Micro preventing that from happening. TP's into the side. Shorty Monsa avoiding damage from the turret. Pushes in but Drebs takes him out. Now it's a 3v1. It's looking like an overtime. Nobody. Marty Vandal in hand. 3v3 trying to win it all. Slowly pushing up towards heaven. The blind dust catches him. Now the satchels goes in. The spam. The KJ turret. The KJ molly. And everything just falls. And now it's an overtime with Mingla Nilia. Ha! Ha! Staying alive! This is the first ever overtime for CEA Invitational's Valorant Tournament, ladies and gentlemen. We are seeing history being made here and we are also seeing at the same time Team Minglanilia's grit and heart. They don't want to end this fight on a bitter note so they take the fight to uh, Team Talisai 
who are now getting switched over towards attacker for overtime. And we're going to see what they can do on equal terms now since in overtime they both have equal creds. So this exactly. is going to show how effective their strategy and aim is rather than relying on the economy disadvantage or advantage. It's basically back to a 0-0 zero zero again. It's anyone's ball game. And that therefore, both teams having to play this one a little bit more sure, a little bit less rash, a little bit less brain off go shoot type of gameplay and they need to properly strategize here if they want to actually win this game and now the utility usage will be shown here as shorty monster tries to clear out heaven they do spot those nano swarms up there so they might not push that the vents will be cleared using that paint shells from the race sasa going up towards the rope Bun not really be able to get that gunfight on as he falls to Sasa. Now it's a 5v4 situation as they push towards the B side, slowly walking here. Do have the man advantage. Uh, they do have the man disadvantage, which is going to be a little bit difficult for them. Especially it's one of their main duelists in the form of the jet. But not Kresk as spotted from the back, but doesn't really get checked as he takes out Marky. Shorty monster falls as well. Not, not Chris taken out by Gerbs. And now it's a 3v2. Tongs with a spike on hand. It does fall. The blind from the Omen does catch him. Makers takes out Curbs as well. Now it's left for Tongs, but he's not able to do anything here. Minglanilia will take the lead here in overtime. That was a pretty good hold from Team Minglanilia there. Just showed the utility usage of the Killjoy and the Omen was on point during that first round in overtime. But we'll see here as they are now switched back to their attacker state to see if you know their aggressiveness shown uh, before overtime will c continue to persist here in this very very crucial round for team Minglanilia. they're going for it seems like they're going for another a stack push here nobody which did work well for them in the previous rounds but question here lies now is it gonna be too predictable? As the push towards heaven from not Chris goes in, doesn't really spot anyone out. They walk in towards heaven, trying to get heaven control and mid control in uh, as a process here. But the turret will be put there. The smoke from the ash will block that out, though. Not really letting anyone see any movement from inside the site, blocking that vision. Oh, look at that cipher cam! What a placement. That's some Dude. TikTok setup right there from Tongs. Just barely seeing the hip. But tag Sasa. I believe Sasa can't even see where that cypher cam is placed. I think it's really a really well hidden spot there. Oh, Tong just coming flying. Doesn't spot not Chris here. But Makers takes out Marky and now it's a 5v3, 5v4 situation. Tong takes out that uh KJ turret here. Look at this. Look at this placement of the Cypher Cam. It's going to be really hard to spot for our players up in ramps here, but they do decide to push this still. The Flash will come through. Doesn't really get anyone. They're still in the ramps area. The double satchel from Sasa already up in towards the heaven area of the map. Not Chris taking out Shorty Monster, making it a 5v3. But Curbs and Tongs equalizing it. Cur Tongs with a 3k. Oh. He pulls the ult out. And Bun taking out Mackers. 13 13 another round Dude, you, could, you could just see tongs pulling a trick up out of his sleeve and that was the 3k that won them the round that was also nice uh communication from tongs and astra i think it was curbs yeah, to curbs. be in sync to be in sync to get the 3k for tongs that was some clean spray transfers as well that was just a clean round overall from Team Talisa, showing, like I said earlier, it was getting predictable. Pushing the A side with a full stack. That's what they've been doing to get to the overtime situation. And the team of Talisa just predicted it and just knew what to do and then just take the round. But still, Talisa doing the same thing. Pushing with a stack towards the A side, but it's a slower push for them here. Using the utility as well. The Trailblazer goes in. The Pain Chill gets shown. The Satchel gets used. They're in sight already. Bun is on here. Micro had to fall back. He falls through a spray through a smoke by Bun. And now it's a 5v4. They lose their controller. Curves taking out Sasa though, equalizing the play. Now it's a 5v3. Now the Nano Swarm will come in. It gets destroyed by Bun. 
Very predictable throw there by Drebs, and Bun just throws it, destroys it. And now it's a 5v3, 5v4, 3v3. Drebs, 4, oh my god, that's 3 for Drebs. Guess the lockdown online, it's one enemy remaining, but it's Marky though. And Marky might be able to pull through here, never mind. Not Chris takes him out, the paint shell does delay the defuse for a little bit. But it still goes through. 14-13, Minglan Nilian takes the lead once again. If they want to win this, nobody, they need to switch up their attack. Yeah, they need to do something other than rushing the A site. Because it has a, despite be having a very high rate of success, it's just, it's just becoming too predictable now for Team Minglanilia. Exactly, and the thing is, it's not even just Minglanilia doing that. Talisa does it as well, so Talisa knows any counter strat because it, it's a strat that they do too. So it's going to be really difficult to push through with that, but now we're seeing that they're kind of switching it up. Three players towards the B side, two players towards the mid. They do have the spike on the mid area though, as Marky takes out an early engagement here, doesn't really get it, and one doesn't really get tagged as well, but he does get information, and that's what's important. They know that their player stacking up towards the B side, but not Chris, does not check the corner and gets taken out by Bun. Now it's an early 5v4 by the team of Team Talisa here, looking to tie up a game, looking to stay alive in this matchup. And now it's Marky holding on towards the B side. It's still split on A and B here, but there are more players learning towards the B side. There is a flank going on onto the A side by the sky. But it's not really that effective as there are three players in B. For the defender side as well maybe hoping to get that rotation if he wants that to happen he should start making noise now as the engagement pulls through and bun takes out drabs sasa takes out marky and now it's a 4v3 now the fall and rotate back towards the a side it could have been a good distraction but it didn't pull through but it's still a good backup plan here as mackers will get into an engagement with the astra possibly he gets the blind on the star will pull from back for Gerbs, and he does take him out now. It's a 3v3. They have sight to themselves. The spike might be able to go into the site here, but the rotation from the team Talisa is already here. It's a quick one, it's a fast one. But they did have like the, the race blocking micro a little bit there for the TP. But the spike will go down for them. The blind goes as well. Shorty Monster and the rest of Talisa cleaning up, making a 14 14 round. It's a little bit of a messy. From England, Nilia there. Yeah, it was because of Talisa's defense. Like, their defense was so good, Team England, was forced to abandon the original strat and use something that they probably aren't too familiar with or haven't planned enough to execute. And that's what made them lose the round and got Talisa the round win, extending this overtime. We are now into round number 29. It's a crazy number for Ooh, Valorant. Woo. 29 rounds is going to be a long night for us and all our viewers here. Nobody so if you're not following the CEA Facebook page, make sure you do. The blind will go in here. Only matching one though, but still that's information that there's people in towards the A side. Talisa pushing A still with a stack, but it's the sky lurking towards the B here. Maybe possibly trying to get a pick or a backup plan. Micro just holding the main area of A-Site here. This guy tries to regroup with the rest of his team. They do need an initiator to get a good push going here. And that's what Sky is, the dogs, the flashes, all that. But Curbs will be setting up some stars here. Possibly towards the mid and B-Site as well. They're just looking for something here. They, they have Yeah, look, the stars is on B-Site. And he pops them. Tries to get something there, maybe a rotation from Team Talisai, but now it's them trying to get the site here. They take out markers here, and now it's a 5v4 really quickly. Plant might go in, but it does stop because of the pain shells, and then now it goes back in for Team Talisai. 14 14, Spike is down, 5v4 situation, not Chris. Goes for the wall bang. Doesn't really take anyone out, but Marky is down to a very low HP though. Micro and not Chris pushing out. There goes Marky. There goes everyone though. As uh, Team Talisa takes another round, 15-14. Now they take the lead, nobody. And we've seen them in defense. Milanilia has been struggling, attacking against a defender side of Talisa. And now Talisa has the lead, and they're going into defense. This is gonna be tough for Milanilia. 
yeah, this is going to be explicably tough because they haven't been able to pierce through in the la- in the last few rounds. In the context of the last few rounds, they haven't been able to pierce through the defense of Team Talisay. But let's head into round number thirty and watch things unfold here. 30 rounds. That's crazy. I believe this is the longest Valorant match I've ever casted, nobody. I think. I'm not entirely sure about that. But still, Mackers will be spotted there onto the mid area of the map as they try to get this split push once again. The A push wasn't working. The split push didn't work last time. But they're trying to reinforce this with the help of utility. It also spats the shorty monster up in heaven as they slowly move towards the mid-B side here of the map. A side, though, still has KJ and two players there, so this is still going to be a little bit difficult for attackers to penetrate as they move towards the mid-area. Sasa left alone here now as the Omen will be regrouping with the rest of the crew as not Chris taking out Bun early into the matchup. Smoke Dash avoiding the trade there, so they're kind of just walking. Trying to get an engagement here. The flash will come right through. And not Chris. Taking out Marky. Smabbing through the smoke as well. Shorty monster up in heaven. He takes out Mackers. But they know he's there. He falls back. And now it's Curves. Regrouping with his team. It's a 4v3 situation. Team Mingla Nilia for the first time in this context of the overtime. It's the lead in terms of attacking. Might be able to penetrate through Talisa here. They get the plant down. Now it's up for Talisa to retake and win the game. Or Mingla Nilia to defend this spike and get the round going. And they do, even though stunned. Micro still taking out curbs. And now it's a 15 15. Oh round 31 will go through. Oh, wow. I think this is going to be very taxing for both sides to be able to go into round 31 and keep a steady mental state. That's going to be uh, very hard to do, especially when you're fatigued with 30 rounds of non-stop firefights here in this mm-hmm. game matchup of Minglanilia versus Talisay. So round number 31. Yeah, number 31 indeed. Talisa now on the attacking. Nano Swarm will get destroyed. That would be a better push for them towards the B side here with that Nano Swarm out of the way, being making it safer. Also, getting rid of that utility from the KJ. It's going to be long round, a long game, most probably, because these teams are just so good going back and forth against each other. But now it's fun. And the rest of the, the Ming- Talisa crew just taking their time against this Mingla Nidia, dancing with Drebs here in the B side. The A pushes wasn't working. And now they're going for the B. It worked for Mingla Nidia. Maybe it'll work for them too. The grenade will get thrown to clear that backside. Buns will dash into the side. He gets punished by Drebs. Drebs though, getting traded by Marky. The trades comes in quick. Now it's a 3v2 situation with Mingla Nidia, the man advantage. Marky left alone. It's 16-15. It's Mingla Nidia once again taking that defender round. And hopefully... Hoping to get this attacker around as well as round. I can't do math anymore, nobody. What round are we in? We are now in round number 32 as Makers was just making a play during that last round. He held that site just as close as he would hold his son if there was one. Like he would <coughs> hold a baby. That's how close that's how close Makers was holding the site there. Where where did that come from? <laughs> I was just thinking about baby kittens, which is very okay, good okay. for you to have Muning, our sponsor, cat litter to help your baby kitties be organized. Exactly there, nobody. Thank you so Not much Chris. for Muning. And the rest of our sponsors for making this possible. Not Chris taking out curbs early into this matchup. Now it's a 5v4 situation. And not Chris with a clean entry for his team. Team Milanilia, the spike will go down. They have the man advantage. They're looking to win this. They're looking to take the win and end this game. But Marky taking out Micro. They fall down. They don't check. They don't check. Sasa takes out two. Now it's a 2v4. He falls as well. And there we go. The comeback is complete for Team Milanilia. Pulling it from a disadvantage. Enemy having the match point coming through, getting us towards overtime, and then, and then, and 
them coming through with the clutch and the comeback. What a match between Team Milanilia and Team Talisay going the distance, going far and beyond what Valorant usually is. Over 30 rounds of Valorant. Wow. I mean, you would probably be hungry after that, nobody. And you know what? The best food to eat after a long, long day of gaming? Virginia. It's and a bun of course, of hot dog. Yes, 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 Virginia. One of the best hot dogs in the country, in the world, maybe even in the universe. Who knows? Virginia Hot Dog, one of our sponsors. Thank you so much to our sponsors for making this event possible once again. Virginia, Bioagronica, Muning, Omega, and Dos Amigos. Without these sponsors, Cebu Esports Arena's Invitational Valorant Division would not be here. So thank you, thank you so much for making this whole event possible. Everyone might be hungry, so we're going for a quick break. And we'll see you guys once we come back. With some more Valorant action. That was a great matchup between Minglanilia but Talisai. But up next, we have Mandawe versus Barili. And after that, Cebu City versus Lapulapu. So stay tuned. Don't leave. Follow the stream. Thank you so much for watching us. We'll be right back after this break.
And we're back with some more Valorant only here in Cebu Esports Arena. What an incredible match between Minglanilia and Talisai. 32 rounds of Valorant. What an insanely long but amazing matchup from both teams putting in a show for everyone watching. Right, nobody? Yeah, exactly. You're very correct in terms of saying that it was a crazy match. Crazy might be an understatement because 32 rounds of Valorant is <laughs> no joke. It's very it's very tiring. It makes your heart race, makes your your blood pump a lot. Like it's just insane. That's all I can say in the previous match. Crazy? I was crazy once. Now I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> We're not gonna go into that copy pasta, but <laughs> That was an insane Valorant matchup, nobody, and that's just that's just the first day of uh, the Cebu Esports Arena Invitational's Valorant Division. We have more to come. We have two more games tonight, and there's more coming soon. So y'all better follow the official Facebook page of Cebu Esports Arena to get up to date. To get updated, exclamation point, notify in the comments as well. To get notified when we go live, not only with Valorant, but Mobile Legends and Call of Duty Mobile as well. So stay tuned for that. That's tomorrow. But for now, we're in for some more Valorant action. Mandawe versus Barili. And it looks like they're going into Ascent. Ascent, of course, popular for its paper thin walls its wall banks so i'm gonna be shocked if i don't see a sofa or a fade in this game how about you nobody i think i think i'm gonna be more shocked if there's no jet like <laughs> jet is True. pretty much a standard in this map especially but we could, it depends on their composition actually they might have other strats that we might not know about but Ooh. just seeing uh, from the previous games, like the diversity of the picks, the ability of teams to make to mount a comeback and extend it to triple overtime, like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure if that that is going to happen ever again. But <laughs> we will have to see. This is this is Mandawi versus Barili we're talking about. Not that we know much about them, but these these players made it all the way to CEA. Dibui Sports Arena, so they're here to prove their medal and test it against other players of the same or even higher caliber. Exactly there, nobody. And we might not know about these players now, but they're here to show what they're capable of. Show everyone that they're skilled and to show everyone that the Cebu Esports team is thriving. Cebu Esports scene is skilled Cebu Esports scene is capable to compete against national, maybe even international talents just because of how amazing our players are here that we're seeing in the Cebu Esports Arena Invitational Valorant Division. But I think they're not going to ascend. Maybe they're going to split. We don't know just yet. They haven't locked in the map still. But either way, last map was split as well. And like I said, Split is known to stretch out gameplays, make out long matchups. And that's what we saw, a 32 round game of Valorant. So if they go into Split once more, we might see another triple overtime. Maybe a quadruple overtime. Maybe even a quintuple overtime. We don't know. It's a toss coin. But I'm just saying, Split is known for long matchups. And we might just be in for another one. Yeah, you are correct there in assuming that there could be another overtime. Personally, I want another overtime just to spice things up even more. Just to make this a very hot night for Cebu Esports Arena Valor Invitational's Valorant Tournament. And we are heading on to Split again. So we're going to be seeing some familiar strats perhaps. Some familiar mm -hmm. rat spots, some familiar Ooh. team comps. We might see we might see another another cipher, another uh Astra and Rays, especially Rays. Or mm -hmm. maybe, maybe just just maybe. Hopefully we can see a KO. 
don't you think? Oh, oh, okay. Oh, would be nice. Well, either way, if it's split, it's probably gonna be a long game, like we talked about. So, I'm just saying, grab some snackies and watch the gameplay. And what best snackies than Virginia hot dogs and nuggets? Of course, one of our sponsors for Cebu esports arena thank you so much virginia and bio agronica Boning omega and also dos amigos for sponsoring cebu esports arena invitationals and making this whole tournament possible thank you so much for helping us out so do you think uh have you remembered the time we were talking about patch 7.0 forward Mm -hmm. There is actually yep. a bug bug fix, which is uh, oh. kind of leaned towards fixing KO, actually. Because his suppression suppression skills, his ultimate, or his uh, mm -hmm. his knife, like, I forgot what the name of his knife was. Oh, his zero point and null yeah, command the zero point. suppression were were not instantaneous. Like, there, were, there was still a window of time. Where Ch Chamber could TP, Yoru could gate crash, or Omen could actually pop his ult from the shadows. So uh -huh. that has been fixed now in the in the recent patch. So if ever, oh. just just if ever, we are going to see a KO. We are going to see that bug fix live in action. And well, despite despite whatever they're picking right now, I don't see a KO. So I'm yeah. kind of sad right now. There's no KO it's okay, again. Nobody. It's <laughs> It's uh, you so can cheer up with some, jet. yep, you can cheer up with some Virginia hot dogs. Once again, thank you so much, Virginia, Bio, Agronica, Muning, Omega, and Dos Amigos for making Cebu Esports Arena Invitational possible. But here in the agent select for Split, we're seeing, okay, it's not a mirror comp. They have an Astra and a Viper, a double controller comp for, I believe this is, what team is this? Man, um, uh, Mandawe. Okay, for Team Mandawe, we're seeing a double controller setup. For Team, uh, for Team Barili, we're actually seeing a double Sentinel, I believe. Yeah, I think I think it's a double Sentinel, which is very. I think they're opting for a, a you know, a last last half. A stretch because, like I mentioned before, Split is a very defender-sided map. So having two Sentinels mm -hmm. in the second half, even if they're ahead or if they're chasing the score, it would still be very you know kind of beneficial oh. for them to have two Sentinels. I think that's the Wait. play here. Just me. It's it's not a double Sentinel actually. It's a double through list. My eyes, my eyes have deceived me. Oh, I it's apologize. It's a double duelist. It's a raise and a jet. Similar composition in terms of, of attacking duelist here. Uh, in the last matchup, wherein we saw a duelist that is a jet and a raise as well. But for... Actually, it's for both teams. They have two jet, two duelists. A jet and a... A jet and a raise, yeah. So, Team Mandawe sacrificed Sentinel in order to pull off a double duelist, double controller comp with the Sky as an initiator. Meanwhile, Team Barili went for the double duelist, single initiator, single controller, single con uh, sentinel comp. But the push will go through towards the Asia. It's a fast one, but beats taking out Chica early on to this matchup. Clean Sheriff plays Rain taking out Virgil as well. Now it's a 4v3. Man Rain once again is keeping with Tiger Falls. Magix takes out Moila de Torret as well. And now it's Gram left alone. 4 5 5 one actually. And they're looking for a flawless game here. This that that was it. That was a quick round. <laughs> Clean flawless. Are you serious? <laughs> Wait, what was his name again? Moira <laughs> de la Torres. Bro, that's that's actually kind of kind of dope, man. That's not creative. not gonna lie. Props props to that name, Moira de la Torres. That's just I like that. I like that. Yeah, as soon as I saw it, and as soon as I saw it in the lobby, I was like, oh, that's a creative name. That's a really really creative name. But now. The round number two will begin. The 
defender team will be having the advantage here. One to oh, Mandawe beats already with these Marshall on hand, going for an aggressive push towards the B main area. Brain freeze though, holding up mid with a Viper smoke. I believe this is the reason why they they sacrifice a Sentinel here, because technically you can play uh, Viper as a Sentinel. You can hold sight with a Viper in terms of split, but that's just not going to be possible for this round as he early into the matchup. It's a 4v4. The rest of the crew going in towards the B main area, but beats with that flank. Marshall and Sheriff clean takes out, and the rest of the team cleans up as well. There's 2-0. Mandawe showing up. You can see that the Rays has already picked up a um, Vandal, so he's very confident in his skills, and now that's going to transfer into round number three, wherein Barili might have uh vandals or rifles of their own but now that since the rays has a vandal they have a fighting chance uh in long range altercations or long range fights so that's a pretty good move coming in from the rays actually exactly but the thing is he only has 125 hp i believe so it's going to be a little bit of a tough match for him but the push will come in towards the b side Trailblazer will get invested in Nate as well, will get thrown. The dash in towards the side by Virgil, and now he clears up this side of the side. He gets into a gunfight, but Brain Fees, Ajax as well, getting two with that Pain Shell. And now it's just KJ left alone once again. He gets stunned on, but Grab takes one out. 39 beats there, though, for the trade. It's a quick 3-0 by Mandawe. Quick rounds, aggressive defending here by Mandawe. Like, bro did not even need the Vandal, right? He got two kills using the paint shells, and th that was <laughs> that was more than enough to debilitate the entire enemy team, the entire Barili, to stop and halt their push. Yeah, that paint shell alone, taking out crucial members of the crew, and making it way easier for them to defend the side and stopping the push. Barili needs to make some changes here if they wanna, in terms of strategy, if they wanna pull through because right now it's looking grim. They're not able to respond to the aggressiveness of Mandawe. Look at this, 39 beats, taking out Moira, Moira de la Turret early on to the matchup. That's their controller gone. It's done so for them in terms of controllers. And now it's a 4v5 situation. The push coming in towards the mid as well. The turret gets taken out. Now it's Sipin Mutiger is hiding in this corner, but he gets checked. Is that a team paint shell? A team paint shell towards that, but Magic's taking out a CP with Tiger. Brain Freeze taking out the Gram as well. Another round by Man Mandawe just losing one man. Mandawe losing. Yeah, Mandawe is looking very aggressive in this matchup. Like, I don't think they they've stopped pressing the W key. Like, have you seen nope. their plays? They've been very aggressive in pushing, even while they're defending. They're always going for the push trying to get the first kill, get the first blood of the game, just to establish and put their foot in the door for this game up against Barili. I mean, it's it's more of a, a dominant play for them as well, you know, in terms of mind games, because, like, imagine you're attacking and you just gets pushed through every round by the defenders and just falls and gets absolutely destroyed. It's, it can take it all in your mental, make it difficult for the, to, to actually muster up the courage and the strategies to get a round win. But again, now Mandawe making it slow this time, actually. They're not pushing it. They're trying to not be predictable, but we see. Look at that. Someone's crouching over there. It's 39B. It's possibly with an operator on hand. As he just takes out Virgil, Ooh, the patience Virgil. from Team Mandawe. But he gets traded out by Chica as well. The pain shell forcing him to push out. And then the Vandal just crashes. Bullet straight to the head. Mag Magics though. Here in heaven. But he gets taken out. It's a 3v3. But Brain Freeze pushing out from the screens area of the match. Takes out Tiger as well. And Flash takes out Moira to the turret. And now it's 5-0 in favor of Mandawe. It's not 5-0. This seems to be... An economic crash for Team Barili because <laughs> there's not, there's just uh, only, they only have very little to work with. Now, you can see the Rays even bringing out the Judge for this round. I don't know what they can do to stop the defense of Mandawi, but the Viper has always been at middle, so there's just too much smokes. That's all I can say for Team Mandawi. Have you ever heard of the Caster Curse? Nobody. Yes, I have done that a, 
a lot of times I'm very guilty of caster cursing a lot of teams. I think they're still mad at me up to this <laughs> day. <laughs> I feel like we have activated it into this game. We talked about having it into a long overtime game, but now it's just team and that we're rolling really. 5-0 early onto the matchup. They're trying to push things to the A side here. They've tried to push B the last five rounds, not really going well for them. Now they're looking to go towards the A side, still not being able to penetrate through the heaven area of the map. No guns versus rifles. They have eco, but we'll see if they can pull it shifty here. But man range is taking a grab early onto the matchup. That's their sentinel gone. Now it's certain and beats with the operator in hand. Looking towards he almost shot through the Ooh. legs of the sky there. But the discipline and the bullet there. I mean. Now he takes out Moila to the third. Now he pulls out the blade storm, gets into an engagement. The brain freeze takes out Virgil. He takes out Chica with a headshot as well with the brainstorm. Whips the sheriff. But he has a shorty <laughs> on that? hand. He still whips it. A brain freeze with the disrespect. Jumping in with a knife. A 6 to 0. Oh, another round for Team Mandawe. Did they get the operator or were they too busy celebrating? Um, can, can someone check? Wait, can we, can we get, get a tab operator? real quick? Okay, yeah, they did get the operator. Oh, they okay, did get, okay, they did get okay. Operator. <laughs> I thought that but I, thought hey, I was like, either going to way. See another one of those things. Either way, look at the money though, man. A flash has 8k creds. They don't even need to pick up the operator, they can just buy another one. Each one of them actually can buy operators if they wanted to because of the credits advantage that they have. The trail basically will be pulled out here. The, the lockdown as well. But damn, that is a wall from the Astra going in. All the utilities getting used. Flash taking out Virgil. Flash taking out one more with a rat spot over here. He takes another one through the smoke. Chicken PC. That's four for Flash. Brain Freeze steals the ace. But wow, what a hold from Flash. 4K. Two what? kills through the smoke with the headshots. Yo, Flash, that's crazy, man. I mean, I gotta be real with you. That was crazy. You, you were there's like a lot of utility being spent spent on on Flash, but he was just still alive. Like he was I, I think, tapping heads one after the other. I think Flash got the wrong DC character name. He might not be Flash or nobody, he might be dead shot without dead accurate those shots were to the heads of their opponent. But now the push towards the A-side comes in again for Team Barili. Rain holding this with a Vandal in hand. They still don't have guns, but really, I still at gun disadvantage here. I mean, they do, but like, 125 HP. Bladestorm on Virgil as well, gets to the updraft, doesn't really spot out anyone. Gets another one, but doesn't really see anyone. That wasn't a good, really... Utility usage from him switching the up drafts. He actually gets stagged with it as well. Now he's now down to 78 HP with six shields. And now they're holding it against Pete to the operator, man. They know not to push this. They're falling back. Magic is up in heaven with a vandal in hand. Moira deliterate. Tries to swing this with a sheriff. He gets spotted. Now they know he's here. The heal's coming in from the sky. Then the gunfight goes in. Magic gets stagged a little. But the grenade, the brain shield will be thrown. Just walking through it, but Virgil falls. Moira is low, and now he has a showstopper on hand. This is looking great for Barili. It's a 5v4, 5v4 as well. Moira did a turret, 9 HP. Good as dead. Sheriff on hand as well. If Magix just wants to, he can just double satchel and get their kill here, but he tries to play it safe. Playing with Daff, the op, he gets tagged though. 5 HP dashes out into safety. The smoke will go in, but still taking out a sleeping with Iger with that wonderful op shot. Moira did a turret, gets some heals, but he gets taken out by Magix, and now. They're looking for another flawless round here. Chica, 100 HP, Sheriff in hand. He gets into an engagement. Magic takes him out with a quick little race stiff there. 8 and 0. Another flawless round for Team Mandawe. Like, this is... This is turning out to be a bloodbath forward. Like, mm -hmm. you can see the, the mental fatigue coming in for this early into the game. Because who just runs into a paint shell? Like, we have seen yeah. that in the last round. They just run through the paint shell and let's see if they can change things up for this round now that they have guns. So we can mm -hmm. see a switch in the tide. Marshall in the hand of one other player though, but we know how deadly the Marshall is a one tap headshot to anyone who falls for it. But Flash taking out Moela did a third as well and beats with a wall bang up shot to Graham. Now it's a 4 5v3 early into the matchup. The blind will go in, but beats once again taking out the CPU Tiger. Now Shorty on hand, he falls to Chica, takes him out, dashes away. Now it's one play.
player left for team, but really, man, this is looking grim for them. Virgil just trying to save the Vandal. Moira, that, oh my god. Just playing with him, toying with her food. And now from the back, it's Flash. Another flawless round from Team Mandawe. This is just not looking good for Barili. But Mandawe is showing dominance in the game of Valorant. But forward, game's not over. We were talking about Split. Uh, Split being a longer, longer Valorant game than usual. So, uh, hoping we might see something, you know? Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. But let's not cast or curse this one, okay? Let's not do that. Let's not please cast or curse this one. I don't want to get hated by a whole province in Cebu, please, no. <laughs> okay, let's you know round again I'll, once again. I'll take, I'll take one for you. I'll take okay. one for you. I want to be Oh hated. my god, speaking of taking this. one. 39 beats, taking one with that operator from a cheeky angle. Flash takes one of his own as well. It's a 5v3 situation. Moira de la Turret is zipping Mo Tiger and the KJ looking grim for them. Spike is on towards the B side. However, Magic's wings gets fallen. Now it's a 3v3 scenario for the first time. It's looking like Barili has some fight. It's looking like they can get this one over with, but no. The smokes will come in, preventing them to push from the B side. They will slowly rotate towards the mid here. Catch someone off guard. Rain, not flashed. They don't know he's there. There is no blinded voice cue for them. As they push towards the mid side, the up falls. Doesn't check the corner. He pays for it. He gets flashed. Now he falls. Oh my god, almost whiffed that one. Last player in sewers takes out the rain though. It's... It's... It's beats and it's flash. It's beats with an operator and it's flash with a rifle. Either way, he falls because where are you gonna go? You get one with an amazing accuracy with an operator, and then there's flash, who, by the way, just triple headshotted while getting spammed with utilities a few rounds back. There's nothing to do there. It's just 10 0 now for Team Man Mandawe. Yeah, there was just no way. That Barili could have done anything in that situation. It may have been a 1v2, but if both players are looking at you at uh, different angles, you need to have godlike uh, flicks to actually win that round. Even your favorite Seamer 10s would whiff that, to be honest with you. That was a really difficult round to win for Team Barili. But now the push comes in towards the mid side as well, and Chica actually takes the first engagement here. Taking out Magix early on the matchup. Magix has been their mid hold, but now Chica has taken him out, making it a little bit freer for them. Graham takes out 39 beats with the Marshall as well. This is going to be the best look for Barili ever in this game, uh, in this matchup. It's a 5v3 situation. Team Mandawe is down with manpower, but note that their best players are still alive. They might still be able to retake this. Look at this brain freeze up in middle. He sees Chica. He knows he's there. He gets into an engagement. But look at that. Just taps his head clean off. The lockdown will get invested into this round. Trying to get into the side. The poison will be thrown though. Trying to slow them down. The flashes comes in as well. There we go. Flash goes oh, in. This is same, the same position situation. from Flash. This is the same situation. And he takes one as well. That's another one from Flash. Shoot the smoke check him PC please. The old from the Viper gets invested as well. It's a 3v3 situation now. This is looking grim for Barili all of a sudden. Moira de la Torret utilizing the flank to get rid of their sky. Now 3v2 scenario flash wrapping around from the back. He will be meeting Moira de la Torret there in the sky. V sky and flash gets, I mean Astra, I'm sorry, flash gets the Astra diff. Angel and the Jet saving their gun here. No time. Trying to plant. Actually, not save the game, but trying to plant. My apologies, they do get this plant down. And now it's a 2v2 retake. Only sheriffs and frenzies in hand. No shield for Virgil. Flash gets the swing. Doesn't really get the kill yet, but he will reposition. Now facing is with Tiger here, but Brain Freeze along here to help him as well. Phantom on a hand. He takes out Virgil, and Man Flash takes out Isipinmo Tiger. What a round from Dawe. You know. Brain Freeze reminds me of uh, Fnatic's Leo, for some reason. The way he plays, the way he's so accurate with a Phantom, reminds me of Leo from Fnatic, which, by the way, is a time world champion. That's how, that's how Brain Freeze plays. 11 stats, 
15 0 from Flash, though. That's just some crazy gameplay from Flash. Look at their economy as well. They're oozing with money, except for Beats, of course, who's been buying the operator, but still, his teammate can buy for him. He has the Blade Storm ready. His team is looking good. Now it's the last round in the half. 11 0. It's looking grim for Barili. The double satchel from Chica going up towards the heaven area. The Trailblazers will be pulled out. He gets into engagement with Brain Freeze, and oh, once no. again, he falls. Just quick headshots. Rain sticks out Graham as well. Virgil will get rain, but still, it's a 5v3 situation. Tiger will get the plant on here. Brain Freeze, though, gets called lacking, but still, look at that. He had you to the end. No him, way. But he still takes out Virgil. With a phantom headshot, Whoa, Flash okay. up in heaven again. Magic's taking out Moira de la Torre. Now it's a 3v1. It's sipping with Tiger left alone here. Phantom in hand, full HP. Man, 39 beats with just a clean blade storm headshot. And the defuse comes through as well. 12 0 0. Hey, that, was, that was Flash's first death. Switching yeah. Sides. I and caster cursed him. I'm sorry. Very good. Now I am sorry. By the entire Mandawi. I'm sorry, Mandawi. Please don't hate me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is round number thirteen. So the last swap. game we had the longest match. This game is possibly the shortest one, right? Possibly, but possibly. game's not over. Game's not over. Game's not, game's over. not over. We can't count out Barili just yet. I mean, they did manage to take off Flash, so maybe there's hope. Maybe there's a glimmer of light for Team Barili here. Maybe, just maybe, hey, Moila de la Turret can sing that, them to victory. Maybe that was the canon event that, you know, Barili yeah. needed. The canon event they needed to get into this matchup. And look at this! Magic's already taken a Chica, making it a... 5v4 situation already. Lone HP is jet though, as long as magic as well. And now it's Sipin Mutagar holding down the B side. They already have mid control. That fast. Mandawi already has mid. And now they're looking for an engagement here. Rain versus, I mean, Flash versus Graham as Flash takes that gunfight. Now it's a 5v3. Flash now all the way up in the main. Tiger inside holding us with a ghost. We might just be seeing a 13 0 game here. It's a 3v5. They already have mid control. They already have A Haven control. There's no defender in the A side. And Virgil taking out rain, but still. Moela the Turret getting healed as well, but still it's a 4v3, but low on HP is magic. Here's Looking magic. at it really has a chance here. If only they check this off angle, they do Magic's falls. The flash will go through by flash. But it's 3v3. With them having the HP disadvantage, beats 22, Ash 74, the Viper as well, low on HP, Virgil already on site, Brain Freeze, Flash takes more than the turret out though, taking the utilities out with him, now it's a 2v2 situation, Brain Freeze is low on HP, the tap goes in, beats taken out Virgil and suddenly it's a 2v1, the spam through the smoke, ping the spike! Because oh, the no, defense no, will come in. No They're not way. checking it. It's not a 13. No oh, way. it's a 12 1. As Barili stays alive. No. Wow. The, the courage to stick that defuse, though. Bros, don't fake. Ain't no way, bro. That was, no. that was very ballsy. Man. Pros don't fake. That, that has just been proven right now. Bros, don't fake. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, the other one, the the heaven player was spamming the the spike, but smoke. But there, there's no ping on the spike. It's a little hard to to actually get it done without pinging the spike. But now it's twelve to one. I think I think Mandao is done playing around. They let that one slide on accident. But now they're not gonna let it slide. Never again, according to Mandawi, as they try to push in towards the beam side. Actually, no, they already have A Heaven already. That fact. Taking A Heaven already, but more like the turret, taking down beats. And now it's a 4v3. 4v4 as Brain Freeze takes out more like the turret as well. Now, this, this guy is low in HP though, so this can be a little bit of a top 5 for them. Brain Freeze already has side control. The Viper Wall will come up. Team retake the site. 
Oh, Chica from the back. Cheeky with a headshot. Sheriff, he picks up the Spectre. The rest of his team will come through as well, but Flash and the rest of the Mandawi crew already at the B site. Not even letting anyone know except for KJ, who's hiding behind the box, taking out Magics here. And now KJ might just hold it for them. Never mind. Flash takes him out with a clean headshot. Now it's a 3v2. Guys, 21 HP. You see Pinball Tiger up here. He takes out. Uh, he gets taken out by Flash, but Virgil gets the trade going. And they take another round. 12 to 2. Like I imagine said, if, game's not over. <laughs> imagine if they pull a 12 12 from this. Like, imagine. No, we don't need to imagine. There might be a hope for that. Oh, might be, you know. Oh, I'm scared. Please don't cast a curse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yes. cast a cursing everyone right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, as the round number 15 begins once again, but really hoping to stay alive in this matchup, Bandawe hoping to finish this and continue what on towards the tournament uh, towards the night. But the flash goes in, doesn't really get anyone to. Uh, I be free for them while they're a turret though. Doesn't get doesn't see beats go in actually. He just distracted the flying race. Didn't see the dashing jet. And now he gets taken out. It's a 5v4 situation. Chica going up down ramps with brain feces there watching it. Virgil coming in from screens. The stunned race gets the boom put out. But it's rain and brain freeze and rain again. Now it's a 5v1. They're looking for a flawless for the victory here. And they get it done. GG's 13 to 2 for Team Mandawe. Congratulations, Mandar, for winning this matchup. What a very fast matchup that we've witnessed. Coming from a 32 round. I have, I have goosebumps. I have goosebumps from how well Mandawe just performed. Everyone in the team, if we look at the stat line, everyone in the team, Mandawe, outfragged everyone in team Barilli. That was a domination from Team Mandawa, making it quick, making it seem easy. And you know what? That was a really, really amazing matchup as well. Even though it wasn't as long as the last one, we still got to see some class, class action in, in terms of Mandawe versus really Mandawe showing everyone that they are a threat to be looked at. They're a threat. They should be taken seriously and they should be looked at and observed because they will try to destroy everyone on their path. Maybe, just maybe, Mandawe might go far. They've been the best so far in terms of dominating their opponents, but we'll see as the series progresses, as the Invitationals go through. Of course, this is day one of the CEA Invitational's Valorant Division. And we have one more game for tonight and more coming up soon only here on the official Facebook page of Cebu Esports Arena. So make sure you follow, uh, like, share, and exclamation point notify in the comment section below to get notified when CEA goes live. Not only with some val Valorant, with MLBB and COD as well. We'll see you right after the break. Peace.
And we're back once again for our final set of matchup tonight. Nobody will witness such amazing Valorant action from the beginning up until now. Of course, we have the matchup between Argao versus Luluan in, ha Luluan in Haven. Ming Lanilla versus Talisa in Split that went on for a good 32 rounds. That's right, 32 rounds of Valorant up and Split. And then we had Mandawe versus Barili in split once again with the dominant showing from Mandawe 13-2. We've had back to back the longest and the quickest game of Valorant in CEA history. But right now we're going to be watching uh, match four for today, which is going to be Cebu City. I don't know Cebu versus Lapu Lapu. So, yes, what do you think of ahead of this match up forward? Like, are we going to see another split? Because I think this is a randomized map pick, if I'm not mistaken. And seeing split again would be, you know, would be kind of interesting. I mean, of course, uh, split would be also really interesting matchup because we've seen three, actually, no, four completely different. Uh, team comps in split actually ever since we've played the split this this evening and if we play split again I'm hoping we see a different comp just so it doesn't get stale because the same map in a row would get a little bit stale to watch especially if it's the same comp the same executes the same everything even after that 32 round game so if we do split see split I'm hoping to see a different comp composition I'm hoping to see a different uh, strategy, different executes, different ways to play the game, variety of how split can be played. But I'm hoping to see a bind in the competition, actually. Yeah, we haven't seen bind being played yet, so that would actually be very nice if we could see bind being played. That way, we can see how our Cebu esports players could uh, make their way and put out some interesting strats for bind for us Sibanos and nationwide i'm looking at the players here nobody and i think if i'm not mistaken if these players are indeed the players who i think they are we're in for oh my god we're in for a matchup tonight here as we look at the lapu lapu side we have Achu, punch and precision i've casted these players before and oh my god are they good punch of course i've cast it in in and uh true as well precision precision he lives up to the name nobody he is precise with that rifle and he will take your head off if you try to pick but on the cebu side we have cook saurus if i'm not mistaken i think this is indeed saurus we also have FNY, which I believe is Funny Smurf, which I've also casted. Yeah, you called him. You, <laughs> you called him Funny Smurf back in the yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. So we might just be saying amazing Valorant action to tonight. Oh my god, I'm so excited! A 32 round game, a 13 two, and now we're looking at. Cook source, funny smurf, punch, achoo, precision, of course, with their teams as well. This is gonna be a banger of a matchup. Cebu versus Lapu Lapu City. Oh boy, we're gonna see some amazing Valorant. And guess what? We're headed on to bind. We're headed on to bind. Let's go. All yeah. right. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Finally, we get a different map. It's going to be Bind. Can we see a chamber, please? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm just jumping straight into the pickings. Can we see a chamber? Can like, we see a chamber? Bring him back. <laughs> I believe we're not going to see show a chamber us, here tonight. Show us something. I believe we're not going to be seeing a chamber here tonight as both teams have locked in a cypher for the central Bind. This Cypher's mob, to be honest with you. I, I always play Cypher and Bind. It's always a fun map to play Cypher on. Oh! I believe Cebu hey, is, is going for... Yeah. 
Si Boy is going for a double initiator with a breach in the sky. Yeah, double initiator. While Lapulapu is, seems to be looking for a double controller in terms of a brim and a viper. This is interesting. Two different takes of team comps here in Pine, but of course, you could have the race. You could have the cipher. That's Pine we're talking about. You ain't playing Bind if you ain't playing race or cipher. That's 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 a that's a known agent. fact. That's true. That's true. That's a hundred percent. We play cipher, play race and Bind. But again, the double initiator on the side of Cebu. And a double controller locked in on the side of Lapu Lapu. This is gonna be in. Oh, uh, this is gonna be interesting as we head over to the matchup in a little bit. Uh, like I said, double controller versus double sentinel. In terms of defending, controllers would definitely have the advantage here. Find, of course, a map of a lot of corners. So being able to like smoke out some stuff and allow your team to push in or not allow the enemy team to push in is really helpful. But also, having two initiators allows you to clear these corners very effectively. You have the Sky Dog, you have the Breach Flash, the Aftershock, the Concuss, not to mention the Raze Boombot. So this team is just utilizing everything that they can to be able to clear these corners safely and get through sight. While the enemy team, with their double controller setup, is trying to make it Difficult to do so. This is gonna be an interesting matchup here. Cebu City versus Lapu Lapu is on the way. Precision here with a radiant gun buddy on that classic. We're about to see some amazing Valorant matchup. Oh, I believe they're gonna be using a pause here, possibly to help against the lag. Yep, Fanny has disconnected from the game. Be using a pause real quick. Pause at 10. So that they can have that reconnect going for them. But it is what it is. It happens. We get a timeout real quick. As Funny from the Cebu side tries to reconnect. And we will get back to the game once they're ready. Now, nobody, like yeah, I said, have casted so, of some of this. Yeah, go through. Yeah, you know, yeah, go for it. Go. Yeah, speaking of uh, getting back into the game, like, let's take a look at their compositions right now. Their compositions are kind of fit for their first half, but in the second mm -hmm. half, it's going to be a jumble of strategies because we could see that there's a double initiator in the attacker side right now, but once you're in defender side, it's going to be quite tricky if you have initiators but only one smoke and they had don't have oh they do have a cypher as well so that could play a huge role for both teams coming into their second halves but double smoke for the defending side right now it could i'm not saying that it is a better alternative but when you're defending you need smoke when you're attacking you also need smoke to close out angles that you don't want to fight with so I think having a double smoke setup is kind of a little bit more, uh, what do you say, more fitting for the scenario than having a double initiator. But what are your thoughts on this lineup, Howard? Well, the thing is, if you have a double initiator in your team, you're going to play defense like you're attacking. What I mean by that is play for retake, right? You can't really try and hold sight with two initiators. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be tough because their kit isn't for holding it's for allowing gunfights it's for pushing right so you either gonna play aggressively or you play for the retake which in both cases would be hard to do against a double controller but at the same time if you're attacking as a double controller though you can like smoke out certain areas of the map to make it easier for you to go in having that early engagements is gonna be difficult after smoking, what do you do? It's gonna be tough. You have one flash. That's it. Two flashes actually for Sky, but that's about it. Trailblazer to clear out the corners, but that's about it. There's not a lot of utilities to play off. So as you mentioned, it's gonna be a little bit difficult for them on their opposing side. 
but that's just the case. Valorant isn't merely a game of aim. It's not merely a game of strategy. It's also a mental game. So if you're able to dominate your opponent in the first half and destroy their mental, that's going to be a huge advantage for you coming into the second half because then they're going to start making mistakes. Then they're going to start making wrong calls. Then they're going to start riffing. So I believe the goal for both teams here is to do the best they can possible in the first half to get as much lead as they can and then try to scrape what's left in the second half. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty interesting insight, actually, on their lineups. Though I, I do, I do ag agree with the fact that having double smokes means you can't initiate after the smoke. Like, that's gonna be a huge problem for uh, which team is it? Lapu Lapu, Team Lapu Lapu, yeah. to actually initiate after having smokes. Like, they only have uh, two flashes and a trailblazer, like you mentioned. But however, they do also have a raise, which could be. Uh, the, which could be sa not saying necessarily to sacrifice, but they could pin him the the task of scouting the entire site all by herself. Because Rays, as we have, we have seen from uh, different players already, Rays can fly through entire sites exactly. with two satchels. So just just that info, they could work with that info and play accordingly. The thing about the smoke uh, smoke set they have as well is that the brimstone has three smokes. Once that's used up, it's gone. Bye bye. Viper has one smoke and a wall that expires, and after the nerfs, takes thirty full seconds before you re redeploy it again. So it's gonna be a tough initiation for them once they head into the game as we move in with round number one of this matchup as the push towards the showers will come through the orb will go towards solos immediately but like as i was saying it's gonna be a little bit difficult for them to push through after the smokes but we'll see what happens here this is round one of course where in their their compositions favor their side of the map which is the team with double sentinels i mean double initiators are in the attacking side the team with double controller Controls are in the defending side, but Jelly Ooh, takes jelly. out Neeks early into the matchup with a frenzy and hand clean headshot from him there. The flashes will go in, the mollies as well. The push coming in towards the A side. Bunch clearing out the U-Haul area, but that's three people picking him there. And now it's already a 5v1. Looking for a flawless round here. The plant will go in for them. Precision left alone towards the C uh showers area here. Breach Sun and the Sky Flash will clear him out, and Cookasaurus will take him down. That's Team A's flawless round as well. 1 0 in favor of Cebu. You know, that that defense coming in from uh, Team Lapu Lapu, they may have had double smokes, but early into the round, they already got one of them killed, so that was quite at a disadvantage for them. However, let's see in round number two, let's see if they can try to fix that up as they somehow managed to get a somehow are trying a 3-2 setup here on bind with three players on a which is i think is the right call i think they're going to get lucky for this time two three in a as as cebu city are making a push towards showers Showers push does go in. The pain shells will be invested there. The sheriff fights as well. Jelly and the rest of his crew has the gun advantage. A true here. Sheriff in hand. Trying to hold showers on his own. This didn't end well for him last round as he got taken out by a Fancy. And now they have Spectres in hand. He does fall back. The flash from the Breeze does catch him. He gets flashed once again with a Sky Flash. Punch and the rest of the crew now backing up here on the A side. It's funny. You're taking out a true early on. Cook taking out Neeks as well. Jelly taking out Punch. Cho. Cho gets out Solus too, and but he gets traded real quickly. The plant will go in for Jelly. Precision left alone and B shorty in hand. What's he gonna do? It's a 1v4. Everyone has specters on hand. Toxins are low. He's just playing for time here. Trying to get someone, at least one person, who gets too aggressive and pushes him in the B side and maybe shorty him in the face. I believe Sipu is not about they're not going to let this happen. Ace is going to be left with a shorty and a dream. A shorty than nothing possibly. As Sipu moves out of the way, time expire and a bomb explode, taking 
another round. Good job. I mean, did you see how effective the double initiator was? Breach flash the entirety of back sight, and right after the breach flash, here comes the Skybird. And it's just it's just very annoying to deal with when you've just finished uh, looking away from one flash. Yeah. And when you look back to go back to your angle, there's another flash. That's just that just irritates people to no end. So I think the double initiator for this half is going to prove very, very problematic for Team Lapu-Lapu as they face up against the two initiators from Cebu. Yeah, the positioning of the initiators as well was incredible. One flashes on the right side. And your first instinct, of course, is to look left. But the thing is, there's another flash there from Showers as well. And Funny gets into engagement with Nix here in the B-long area. He does get that headshot with a Bulldog, but the headshot from the Bulldog isn't really that lethal. He is low on HP now, but still alive and kicking the decay coming in from that as well. Jelly takes out Nix with a wonderful, wonderful grenade play and a wonderful satchel play as well. But it's a true taking him out now. It's a 3v2. Left on the backside here is Punch. Molly on hand, Vandal as well equipped, 35 HP, 5 bullets left, he pulls out the steam beacon, Choco takes out Funny and Cook, but CC just knives Choco and Punch cleaning out CC, now it's a 1-2-2 to two and the defenders Lapu Lapu will take one round as well. So Lapu Lapu played that uh, not to perfection, but they managed to eke out whatever was left of that scenario during the last few seconds of that round where Panch was hiding in uh, B-Halls. So that was a very smart move to lay down a Stim Beacon to help his teammate Chocolate get the kills he needed before he got knifed by CC. <laughs> I mean, we love to see a knife kill in any of these tournaments, but Chocolate left alone here and holding on in the A side, but they're not there. Pushing towards B, Cebu crew already here, but the Molly coming in from the Viper preventing the push from the Hookah, but they're all there, they're stuck up in Hookah. Achu, oh, that's a cheeky smoke. Achu hiding inside it, you better check your corners. As they try to push in towards the Hookah area, the flash does come in. He gets one, but he falls, gets traded immediately. A little bit too aggressive there, in my opinion, but he falls, he takes one. The Trailblazers will go in, there's flashes as well. Everyone is flashed, everyone is blind. And now the push will come in towards the B side. Chocolate now going for the rotate here. Checks on the A. No one's there. The players are rotating though. They're not going for the B push. Funny is still there lurking. But the rest of the crew already onto the A side. Trying to plant Spike here. Oh! It's a double fake. They're moving once again. Walking towards oh, the B side. They're doing a double whammy. Yeah, they're doing a double one, but I think, I think Lapu Lapu has to read. But Funny still there. Taking a punch. And now it's left. For the Viper, solo on the B side, both teams on C. Gets one with the Bulldog, the stun comes in, gets the second one. Going for the third here, but he falls to CC. Now it's 2v2, the plant spike will go in for them. The rotation coming in from Chocolate and Neek. Neek sees the breach, he takes him out. Solos gets to the cherry though. Now it's a 1v1. Race versus Sky. He gets a clean headshot Ooh, nice for the shot. retake. And a defuse will go in for them as well. It's now a 2v2 for 2. So this is shaping up to be a very interesting matchup right now because I told both you. teams have played their gun rounds and both teams are showcasing extreme amounts of aim and strategy and there's just too much going on for us to even comprehend some of the times that they're engaging in gunfights. I mean, I told you it's gonna be a fun matchup. Seeing these players, I just saw these players in the lobby early and my eyes lit up. I was like, this is gonna be a fun game of Valorant. And yes, indeed, it has turned into one. But we will be getting our pause once again here as another disconnect has happened. Uh, we do apologize for the delay, but it is what it is. It happens. It is something beyond our control. The reconnects will be going through in a little bit as the game will continue. But... What are your thoughts so far? Nobody seeing these players at you, Soros, uh, everyone, everyone. You know what? I am I'm buckling up for one hell of a ride. This is gonna be a roller coaster game, I think, for both teams. Both teams have uh, so far, you know, four rounds in, 
I'm seeing, you know, extreme amounts of scale patience, strats, and just overall game knowledge, game sense. There's everything you can expect from both teams. They're like very evenly matched at this point in time. So we just have to see if the economy advantage will work towards the favor of one team or will their strats uh, reign or persevere through the economy crisis. Okay, that is true. The round begins once more. They're looking more towards an A push here. But Neeks already deep in showers. Preventing anyone from pushing there as it takes out Funny early on to the matchup. He falls back with his team, but Chocolate takes out Cook as well. Now it's 4v2. Now it's Team Cebu with a lack of numbers. Here. Jelly taking out Neeks though. It's a 3v2 all of a sudden. It's winnable. Jelly with a judge in hand. Solos as well. Sheriff. Best to get a headshot here. There's a new Sheriff bundle. As well, with the clean is expect, but the here we go the boom bot and the flash getting used to clear corners, as I was talking about earlier. Bind has a lot of corners to check. Oh, Solus with clear handshot punch, Ooh, takes him out. makes it a 2v2 now. A true as well. Oh, but precision takes him out very precise with a vandal indeed. They have to be careful though. Jelly is here in U Hall with a judge. He peeks and he falls to a true. It's a 3 2. Vantage goes to the defenders. Lapu Lapu. So now, that now they're up 3-2, but that was with a gun disadvantage. So Cebu had almost nothing to play with except for the sheriffs. And maybe a little bit, there was a stinger, if I remember correctly. So yeah, now we're heading well. on to another gun round. Uh, judge, we're heading on to round number six. This is another gun round. So we'll see the medal of both teams to be tested here on round number six. Yes, sir. Another gun round for both teams. We proceed with the game. A push once again looking towards the A side. Jelly catches that flash to the face. Those paps, the spy for smoke. Tries not to get judged here. He does see a spy for cam and breaks it. Here comes the showstopper taking out two. Now it's 5v2 immediately. Neeks with a clean showstopper kill. Judge in hand still. Now CC looking for a trade here in the showers area. Better be careful because they have judges and weapons. The paint shell will go up. It still doesn't take anyone a boom bot here, tries to clear that area out. The Viper Smoke will go up. CC takes out a chew. Now it's a 4v3. Chocolate though with a trade. 4v2 in favor of Lapu Lapu City. It's looking bad for Sipu in this round here. Spike is with Lapu Lapu. Funny and Cook together. The old from Cypher will go in. He knows exactly where they are. And now it's gonna be tough. This is a wall bang position from Chocolate here, actually, if they know he's here can get checked here but the molly will come true for punch as funny checks out chocolate but doesn't see neeks on the tp the timing the communication everything is incredible from lapu lapu ct neeks with a clean 4k and a defender win once again 4-2 in favor of lapu lapu you know that was amazing strategy to get inside the teleporter and hold it down and just be patient in picking off enemies one by one from the teleporter because you almost can't wall bang the angle you know that last second in the in yeah. the last round you almost can't wall bang that unless you have a super high penetrating weapon right there. like an odin or an op so i think that was a pretty smart move from lapu lapu city just call an op an op come on now Goodbye. oh my god oh, yeah, chocolate <laughs> Taking out Cebu's Jelly with a clean headshot through the smoke here. The tag was there to help him. Now it's Cebu's Solus with a Sheriff on hand once again. Skybird Flash is well ready to be deployed any moment. Look at this. They're looking for a combo here with a Breach. The stun goes in, but Achu dodges it like a boss. It takes out CC. Now it's a 5v2 scenario. Solus, Sheriff in hand, but the rest of the crew has weapons. He gets bullied with that Satchel there, but he falls to Chocolate. And now it's a 3v1 situation. Cook left alone. No spike in hand. Old online, however, if he managed to get spike here and get the plant down, it'd be hope. But no, he falls to Neeks. It's a 5 2. Defenders take another win. That's another round for Lap Lap. I was going to say, hello, uh, are, we, are we audible in the dis? Hello? Hello? I was going to say I was going to say that we should let him cook, but apparently oh. he needed more ingredients because he only had <laughs> a stinger to his name. So maybe this round, uh, the eighth round, they now have guns, 
a rifle, so let's see what they can do. Yeah, let them cook, let them cook. Let's see what recipe they come up with. Maybe it's a B push here, and now it's cook the rest of the crew on towards B long. That flash did not get anyone. They have no information to take it here, except for that gunshot that Jelly has let out here. They're walking towards the B side of the map, but funny. With that lurk towards showers, there is a cypher cam there along with the other cypher utility. So this is going to be a difficult lurk for him to do and accomplish. But the rest of the team grouping up, pushing slowly towards the long area. The ult does go in for precision. So they might double guess. They might walk away and do a rotation here. The spike gets dropped to Solus. And now, wait. Precision holding in this ultimate. He gets cleared by that trailblazer. Now he chose a molly to prevent a push to him to keep him safe. But now it's Cook joining as well as Ray's joining in towards the A side. The Brim ult gets invested as well. A Chu takes out CC but solos with a quick trade. Now it's a 4v4. Spikes on hand. Now they're moving on towards the A side here. The ult from Brim has been invested onto that Viper but still LLC Chocolate taking out Cebu's Jelly and... Now it's a 4v3 funny, gets into a gunfight with Fan, punch falls with a headshot from the Phantom, and now it's a 4v2. Cook has spiked on hand, and the ult on line, he gets swung however, and he falls. That was a good, good timing swing there by Neek and the rest of the Lapu Lapu crew as they take another round, 6-2. So 6-2, this is... It is now a four-round lead by Lapu Lapu City. They have been playing very well with their smokes. As you can see, the Viper mm -hmm. ult on B side prevented a whole lot of uh, push from Cebu City. So we, we are now seeing the effectiveness of double smoke in bind. Exactly. Bind definitely... Both a, a, a good map for double smoke and double initiators as well. But now it's Lapu Lapu showing dominance showing that they can do a lot of things he gets caught with that drug there by the sky and now they're in an eco round here so it's gonna be difficult for them to go up against this rifles of the opponent lapu lapu but they might just be able to pull this off they pull the right strats funny with alert towards the b side gets into a gunfight doesn't really get it when he falls back the rest of the crew is on a for an a push they are getting pressured in shower this is gonna be difficult to take because jelly has a stinger the rest of the crew has serves. The molly will come in. Now Solus and Jelly is separated. If Solus falls here, he will not be traded. But Chocolate take out Cook and CC. Funny gets out Chocolate as well. Jelly takes out Neeks. Now it's a 3v3 situation. But the gun advantage is 2 takes out 2 people. Funny left alone with a green headshot. He picks up a Phantom here. He has an ult online as well. Uses that. Sap for Cage. Chosen for safety. He knows exactly where they are. But the Trailblazer is following him as well. He takes it out. And he shoots. He, he runs out of bullet. He's low, 11 HP here, Cebu funny, but he gets taken out by precision. It's a 7-2 on the round for defenders, and they're snowballing into a victory here. So once again, we can see the the positioning of La Polapo City just being good enough to stop whatever, uh, whatever shenanigans the double <laughs> initiator comp might have up on their sleeve, because... Supposedly, in attacking side, and you have double initiator, you're supposed to have the upper hand. But at the same time mm -hmm. as well, if you've got double smokes as a defender, it's also going to be very hard for your opponents to make a push towards your site when there's like a billion smokes covering the entire site. It's not only their composition coming into play here, nobody. As we look at the positioning of Lapu Lapu City, they're always ready to trade someone out. But as you can see... Jelly pushes into his own pain shells there. That was a little bit of a fail, but Cook takes out precision. But look at this, 30 HP. Someone's already there ready to trade him. Unfortunately, CC beats out with two other people, taking out punch. Now it's a 5v3 situation. The plant will try to go in, but the spray through smokes will take out Solos. Spike will get picked up by Cook, however, and now it's a 4v2. Chocolate and the rest of the Lapu Lapu crew trying to get a retake here as they try to rotate towards the B side. The Cypher trip, Cypher equipment is there, so he knows they're rotating, they hear him. The plant might go in here, CC, looking at long. They have no flank watch. Still, Shelly, looking at the spawn area of the map. Funny takes out a Chew, looking for another here, but then Chocolate falls to Jelly. He just falls. And that's it. 7 to 3. Cebu will take that round. 
Will we be seeing? Uh, no, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> Forward, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not You're gonna not gonna, gonna cast your curse. I know. <laughs> I believe. I, I believe some of the. Stance. I believe some of the players here as well are your schoolmates. So, you best be careful now. <laughs> <laughs> But the push will come through here. It's a split push on bind. Two players going up towards the B area of the map. One going towards the A side through the left. And one going to the A side through the right. But Rage seems to be joining the B players here. CC regrouping with the rest of his crew. Just slowly pushing. They don't know where they're going yet. As of they're just feeling out the situation. Trying to see which side is safer to take. And it's... Cypher and Solos here on A, but now it's just funny going for this lurk and the rest of the crew will slowly push towards the B side now. This is of course going to be a slow strategic push from Cebu. They're trying to get and take rounds here, not just go head on and go W key like we've seen them play the past few rounds as we can see they're ut using utilities more to clear out corners the trailblazer gets invested the flash gets invested but the, hopefully the enemy team gets a counter flash there a chew playing on backside he gets caught with a flash and a trailblazer and now it's jelly in the side he gets spotted by neeks with a, a showstopper though the molly comes in precision will, will be in a engagement here with cook phantom on hand towards the garden area as they rotate towards a, of course, the defenders, that is. But the thing is, Cebu is still towards the B side. They don't have time to rotate towards the A. They clear the corner, but he has to take it out. But CC takes it out. He doesn't know he has the spike! But he knows now he's planting the time. Just a few seconds here, and the first spike will go down. It's a 3v3 situation. Initiator and Sentinel. With two initiators and a Sentinel versus a Sentinel, a Smoker, and a Duelist. Solus here with a crossfire with CC. Neeks, however, and the rest of his crew coming in towards elbow where there is no crossfire. It's just one player from Hookah watching this. The ult come is in from Cypher as well. The flashes will go up. The delay of the push will go. Funny taken out, but Punch will be falling as well. Neeks, 1v2 situation. Pain Shows doesn't get anyone. He gets into a gunfight and swifts it. Souls oh, takes no. him out. The attackers win 70 po 7 to 4. Cebu Last is on a roll as of now. now. Cebu City is mounting some sort of comeback here because they finally figured out how the defense of Lapu Lapu City is being played out, you know, playing with their double smokes. They're just relying on holding angles and not really much relying on how to react to the double initiator comp that they have. You've seen earlier when the. Uh, the sky flashed in and the breach also made a concussion, concussive strike. So there's just too much for a double smoke composition to handle right there in the last round. Yeah, we're seeing now the double initiator come into play in Cebu attacking area and it's looking good for them so far. The thing is, in the A side, we have a cypher holding it down with a really cheek cypher trip and punch looking at it from the back but it's funny facing the viper molly and the paint shell from Ray's all the way in b long but he still takes out neeks and that's a 5v4 here in favor of cebu he's chasing he's looking for another one but no he just uses the ult he falls back they know exactly where they are they know where how many players are in which side and so they're pushing in towards the a side no there's just one two here the smokes will go up the one player from the back of the side gets sprayed down through the smoke chocolate falls to jelly it's a 5v3 situation the flashes will go out the concussion will go in there's only a bucky in hand in the hands of a true here but this might just be enough never mind taken out by precision and there goes punch once more but he falls to cc and it's another round for attackers closing it in from a 7-2 i believe to now 7-5 yeah, so they managed to close up the half. They managed to chase it down to the best possible outcome that they have managed. 7-5. to five. Now is the time we're going to see the things I'm talking about. How will a double smoke setup work as attackers? And how will a double initiator setup work as defenders? So now we're about to see that unfold here in round number 13. Exactly. There you nobody. Know, we're about to see some switch in base 
some switch in style, some switch in possibly results as maybe Cebu can master up again back here from a 7 to 5. Or maybe Lapu Lapu can snowball this into a victory. We'll find out as the pistol round begins of the second half. Chocolate gets into an engagement here. Doesn't really get flashed with a breach. And so he falls back. The heels will go in. They fall back in towards the side. Achu and the rest of his crew still not pushing a certain site. They are favoring B though. Four people going towards it. Viper with that lurk. Chocolate being very careful not to get spotted here. There are pushes from a hookah here and he gets flashed for that sky. Now people know he's there because it does give off a sound cue. What they don't know however is that Achu and another one is already in B long walking towards garden. As Chocolate and the Brim is making noise towards the... Oh, they take it to TP and they're pushing towards the A side. Which is a little bit of a quick switch of plans. Jelly does take out Chocolate. Cook taking out Neeks and Achu with two. Funny Smurf falls. Uh, falling. Uh, I'm sorry. Funny Smurf taking out Precision as well. And Cook taking out Punch. It's a quick flawless round. My brain's rotting. <laughs> So you can see uh, the double initiator is actually kind of very useful here in the pistol round. Just not yet showing off their showing off their skills, I mean utilities, but from raw aim alone, it seems like Cebu City has gotten the upper hand during that round. Yeah, when I talk about pistols, we don't actually see our smokers by utility. Because then they want to be able to buy a gun or a shield. So they just opt for just not all of their utilities. As we can see, Punch here only has one smoke. So it's going to be difficult for their double controller setup to flourish in terms of pistol and eco rounds. Which is not going to be good for them. Solo's taking out Neeks early on with a Spectre in hand. He is slow on HP though. So he might be falling back here towards the hookah side of the map. Now it's a 5v4 early on. They lose their duelist. It's going to be to entry to the site here. A true walking in towards the long area. Jelly just jump peeking here. He's aiming for that, but he just decides not to take the engagement. The pain shield will be invested, but it's gonna... Now it's precision all the way towards the A side, but he does get tagged by the cypher cam. The molly? Question mark? No, doesn't go through. Pasaurus here. Cook just holding in this... Oh, <laughs> the U-Haul area. And Jelly takes out a chew. Now it's a 5v3. Soros takes out Punch as well with a clean headshot using that Bulldog, allow not allowing the trade to come through that Molly in. And CC takes out Precision as well. Now it's up for Chocolate to stay in this round and win this round. But the thing is, they don't have a spike. It's on Cebu's. And now, LLC's Chocolate is just trying to get a pick. Hopefully, doing damage to the economy of the opponent and taking the gun. But no, he falls to Kirk. It's a 7 7. Cebu has messed up a comeback to tie up the game. You know, 7-7, seven to seven, this is shaping up to be quite similar to game number one of today, match one, mm -hmm. of Argo versus Liluan. Liluan, not yeah. Mistaken. Yeah. So we're seeing both equally skilled teams uh, having the uh, firefight in the game. And it's just 7-7 seven to seven right now. We now have the gun round. So we're about to see if raw aim or skill utility usage will win them around. Yes, exactly as the push comes in towards the A main area of the map. No one really falls, no one really gets damaged. But it does get some utility spent. And it will be a game changer in the matchup here as they try for those to regenerate. Of course, the paint shell doesn't regenerate. You need two kills for it. The rest of the utility spent as well need. Some sort of requirement to come back but the dog from the sky doesn't really spot out anyone they're just waiting for time here they're all leaning towards an a push but they're separated not really playing fully together to give them a lot of different options but still it's gonna be a slow push for them trying to play it methodically i've lost the first two rounds of the game uh, of the half and they're trying to win their attack here in their in this round with the rifles on hand course against the bonus of Cebu so we'll see as Cook takes out Neeks oh. early on to the matchup he tried to fly but he gets Bulldog to the head and Shu taking a jelly the flash from CC gets two he gets traded up with Punch though but it's Punch left alone here Spike is on hand he can go anywhere he wants he has a Vandal the Spike 
And the dream solos will be rotating towards the B side, trying to prevent that push. He spots Cook. He takes him out. He knows where the other one is. He gets into a gunfight with Funny. He has no time left. He TPs into B side, but he doesn't know that Solus is there. Stim Beacon goes. Solus is in the tube. Your favorite tube, nobody. He gets caught with a cypher trip. He tries to plant, but Solus is there to take him out. And it's another round from the defenders. That was a clean round for Lapu Lapu. Oh no, that was a very you know a very patient move from cebu i think yeah it was from cebu cebu oh uh, cebu they, i'm sorry they I'm waited sorry. yeah they waited for the teleport because that was bound to come in with a cipher posted up in heaven there was almost no certainty that panch could push into the site so they made they made uh solus stay in b for their assurance and it worked out in their favor yeah, I mean, that's not only the read was amazing, but the trust of the team is amazing that, hey, you guys got A, I'm gonna go B, I got this. And trusting everyone and it just worked out in their favor. Another round goes in once again as Lapu Lapu -Lap tries to go in. Another split push here, people leaning towards the A, pain shells and other utilities are invested in the showers area of the map as they try to push the site, but again, this is not a quick push. They're just taking their time, slowly going in. The ult from the brim is online, however, they can use it in time. Precision is playing with his walls here. Meeks throwing his satchel as well. They are in the tour versus the rifles of Sibu. This is going to be tough for them to enter. The sprays through the smoke doesn't really get anyone. It's more of a spray through the wall, actually. Meeks here, Sheriff from behind. Man. Does it really tag anyone? He does just tag someone, though. Does it get tagged, but it tags someone? And it's going to be a little bit of a health advantage, but still, gonna, this is on Cebu's side. Chocolate is slowly clearing Hookah here. here. Hopefully going for a quick, quick little lurk, taking someone out, maybe go for a quick rotation. As it's just the size I left on B. If you might even take this out, I never mind, I can't be cursed. As Chocolate falls off funny, Smurf, the push comes in towards the A side. The mix is in on B and C C takes him out. Flash is what go in, 14 seconds left. A clean flick by C C to take out one it's now a two to share their hand. Best to get one, one. No, that's just the issue. I'm going to tell you really quick. But it's another round on four teams and two. And two seven. If you think you need to, the momentum is, is there. They have, they had a four round winning streak ever since the half ended. And now we're seeing double eliminator. I stand corrected. I stand corrected. I stand corrected. What I said earlier about. The double 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 being very annoying, annoying during, during uh, uh, the, the second half. half. Now it's, it's becoming, becoming very apparent that, that the double initiator is just as much, much more annoying, annoying, to, deal annoying to deal with. with. Mm -hmm. As I try to switch it up, it up with first where he says, I need to get some good things, 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 Strike. Strike. A two, two was just 
you know, you know it's the right, the right it's place, the right time. It's two mm-hmm. kills. Uh, uh, so we made her of Lafayette La- 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 City, and now they're, 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 they're around the number 18. With the oh. Oh. Around. Chase, Chase, but the Jim Kelly takes the position, position with that nasty push to a short. Was the lead? It's just nice. That's, that's actually like the judge comes in. Soulless. Going going for third hunting. Like the right, right, right. Unique. It's, it's now a 5v3. Man's been playing aim lab here. And now, now in game, he needs to get a here from punch. That's just busy food. But funny. It's going to get a bit of chocolate. A little bit of time for them going on there. The game of those and the many of the elbow players pushing in. The, the ultimate comes in as well. If they try to get on punch. Go, go. So it's a punch and clean headshot. Adam Molly comes in as well, prevents all solos here from pushing in, preventing that land from going on. Look at this, Jelly from one enemy remaining. Oh, solos fall to two. Jelly solo left here in Rebecca. They know where he is. Chocolate's planting. He can't get that. It's not safe. Hop off from the back. And he says two and then chocolate here. Two to be one against Jelly. Can Jelly do he has a rifle in hand? So does that chocolate. And a shoe. Believe in playing is safe. Waiting for someone to peek. Eventually, this is gonna be tough for him. So as soon as he drops, as soon as he drops, cho- chocolate and a chicken beef. As soon as he drops, he's gone. That was, that was clean. Hold from that lampu, using his spike, the, the good cross, the shoe, and now it's nine nine nine. Thank you. You know, you know, that was one example of how to play a host plan. Like, like yeah. if, you're, if you're a rank player and you keep on wondering why you're stuck in the rank, it's probably because you don't know how to post plan. And what level up shitty showed right there was the perfect post plan. They got two yeah. players against yeah. one, so they, they, they uh, positioned themselves in a crossfire and got the win. Because they had the advantage, advantage and the angle advantage. I'm telling you, in my rank game, this guy would have pushed it and died. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's what happens most of the time. <laughs> Same for me, sadly. Oh, that's quite unfortunate, but the push will go in towards the B side here. The engagement will go through guns versus sheriffs and pistols. Here comes Neeks, the judge flying through, taking the 20. And now it's a 5v3 early into the matchup, clearing out the elbow area of the map with that judge. Unfortunately, no one's there. The rest of the lab, uh, Cebu crew rotating all the way from spawn. They are in an ego round, so they're in a bit of a disadvantage here. If they don't know that Neeks is here holding this angle with the judge, it's going to be dangerous for them. The smokes will go in. But there we go, Cook falls to Neeks with Judge. Now, Neeks just holding this with a smoke. Jelly takes out Neeks with a clean headshot with a sheriff, but it's a Chu cleaning the rest of the Cebu crew. It's now 10 to 9 as Lapa Lapa takes the lead once again. So now, after like four rounds. That goes there. Our spike carrier is killed. Spike down B. Triggered. Prepare for hellfire. Oh, spike player is standing. Killed. Thirty seconds left. Spike down B.
All right, we uh, can we be here now? I'm sorry. We apologize for for some technical difficulties that we are experiencing here in the tech, but I am hoping that we can be heard now. Are we? Can I get a confirmation? Hello, hello, are we here? Are we online? Can we be heard? I'm not certain what's in, in in this uh situation here, but hopefully we can be heard. Hopefully we're back. But the thing is we are in a an amazing matchup here between Cebu and Lapulapu. So don't don't let the technical difficulties take it away from you guys. This is a Valorant Showcase by Lapu Lapu and Sipu. Of course, amazing players from both teams showing up. It's a 10 10. It's a close game. We'll see who comes out victorious in a bit once everything gets fixed. But, guys, if you're not yet following the CEA Facebook page, make sure you do like, share, and follow. Exclamation point notify down in the comment section so that you know when we're live with some not only Valorant. Mobile Legends, Bang Bang, and Call of Duty Mobile as well. Of course, this whole thing would not be possible without the help of our amazing sponsors, Virginia Food Incorporated, Bio Agronica, Ning, Omega, and Dos Amigos. Nobody, are you there? Hello, my good man forward. What's up? We are okay. in number 21 already. Okay, nobody is here, buddy. <laughs> but... We are experiencing some technical difficulties, so in behalf of everyone in the production, we would like to apologize. This will be fixed very soon, and the match will resume as soon as it does. 10-10, round number 20 in this amazing game of Valorant, Lapu Lapu City versus Cebu. This is an amazing matchup, as the round will begin once again in 3-2-1. Let's go. The push comes in. Hopefully towards the A side here as the team regroups. The Trailblazer will go in, tries to detect anyone there, clears the corner. The Poison as well coming in, trying to prevent a push from Hookah. The ult will go in for precision. Don't get in my way, but the Orbital Strike counters it out. No one really falls to it, but that does force the Viper to reposition and the rest of the crew. But Funny takes out a Chew. He gets the ult online. They know exactly where everyone is now. The Plant will try to go in here for Neeks and the rest of the Lapa Lapa crew. Precision falls to CC. Iron, the whole showstopper is online. Will he be able to take someone out? Nope, unfortunately. But hey, it's still here. It's a 5v3 situation. They have the plant down. Trying to hold it down for a post plant. Once again, the cross angle. See, Chocolate taking out Funny Smurf. Walking past, using that Cypher Cage. Now it's a 5v1. All of a sudden, Punch gets taken out by CC. And the defuse will go in for Cook. It's 10 to 10. Now 10 to 11. In favor of Cebu. You know that grenade at the last moment? It's like the skill in Call of Duty where you drop a live grenade when you get killed. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, remember that? That was what Rays did. And that was that opted that actually forced Punch to out of the angle and get hit in the head by the yeah. teammates of Cebu City. That was quite unfortunate for Punch, but hey. It's 10 to 11 in favor of Cebu, but hopefully Lapu Lapu will try to master up here, get it equalized, 11-11, maybe even head to 12-11 for them. But Cebu, of course, trying to win this as well. Jelly coming in aggressive with that showstopper. Here comes the party, doesn't really take anyone out. The grenade will go in, and he doesn't get to use it, but it's it gets invested to nothing. It's quite unfortunate, but it's Lapu Lapu knowing when to fall back. And oh, 
Funny pushing through, gets two. He's 27 HP, he Ooh. falls to grenade, but still, it's an advantage for them. The precision as well. Now it's 2v3. Cook holding on to the A side as the rest of his teammates DP in and tries to get against precision, but Jelly takes him out as well. Now it's all left to the cipher here. The flank going. Jelly is suspicious. He's checking behind him. Chocolate. Stinger in hand. Faces a vandal. Gets pre-fired. He doesn't fall though. But there we go. Jelly with a prediction. Gets that flick onto his head through the cypher cage. It's a 12-11 match point for Cebu. Close game. Will Lapu Lapu be able to take us to overtime? Or will Cebu win this round? Let's find out. In a little bit. You know what? I'm I'm hoping for a, an overtime because take a look at the loadout right now. Both teams have rifles and the utilities are still there. So this is like a still pretty much an even loadout except for a few utilities. But it it's looking like Cebu City is oh at the advantage. But ooh, they double had, blind coming in from both teams. They had the same idea there. A, sa a blind double satchel from the races. And they have the same idea, but the thing is, they planted each other and that was satchel into each other. So they decided not to come through with it and fall back. Now they're working towards a hookah push here. The rest of the crew still and beat long. The thing is, same idea, same execution, same time. That was a little bit of a funny Valorant moment there. Flash comes in once again. Now all three of them are blinded, trying to clear this area out. But Jelly has a vandal in hand, ADS into this area of the map. Trying to catch anyone who pushes through. Cebu CC as well has the flash ready. Oh my god! Ooh, one, one tap, tap to Neeks. Just one bam. And that's it. He's gone. Heads off. And now it's a 5v4. The rest of the crew tries to push in, but Jelly takes out a two once more. Precision taking out Solus. Now it's a 4v3. Chocolate up here in the Hooker area of the map. Precision and punch all the way here. Precision is 49 HP, by the way. Poison Herb will go up, tries to spam through it, doesn't really get anyone. Now it's a 5, 4v3 situation. They spray through the smoke, doesn't get anyone, but the race is low. They peek, punch with the collateral, and now it's... Oh, he knows exactly what they are, but a funny left alone, 150 HP, Phantom on hand. Will he be able to win this? The Orbital Strike is online as well. Cypher knows where they are, so the rest of the crew does as well. Now Precision holding this angle, low on HP. As well as chocolate as well. No shields for this guy. 49 for precision. The smoke. I mean the two play Ooh, from chocolate. chocolate coming in. Nobody. You love this tube. Yeah. I have a love-hate relationship with that tube. That tube is abusive. But sometimes the tube is loving. So <laughs> treat it with care. And that's what chocolate uh, did at the last round. Chocolate was mm -hmm. just... Uh, very patient in peeking out, waited for the right time, and just managed to get a kill onto the cipher. 11 to 2 as well. Lapu Lapu stays alive in this matchup as they try to get into the match point and then get into an overtime. Once again, same idea, double sky flash here. Guardian in hand from Nix, chose a grenade to just push Sky out of the way. He's gonna try and get an engagement with the Guardian here. The flash will go through though, but the Trailblazer dog prevents him. Punch takes out Solus. The breach after shock as well going through. The flash going in. All utilities just being thrown on towards the long area of the map here. They're eager to get this match into overtime, but also Cebu is eager to get this much done with. It's a 5v4, Cebu is at the man that's advantage here. Precision just holding that side. Chocolate as well. Moving towards the showers area, but Jelly sees Precision and takes him out. Now it's an even 4v4. Look at this. Just to get the gun, actually. But it's out of the map. The Vandal is out of the map. Precision stuck with the Guardian on. Quite unfortunate for him. Cook and funny. Still holding down is the Ace. Is he better off with the Guardian? Possibly. We'll find out in a little bit as they get into engagement. There is a Vandal right in front of him. Again, picked it up. And you get a gun upgrade. As funny, just looking at A side here, but they're already in B. The orbital strike will go in as well, a little early into the matchup. Jelly is in the elbow though, he didn't get cleared, but Neeks gets taken out. Punch with a trade though, it's a 3v1. Here comes the party, but it's CC who ends the match in favor of Cebu 11 13, a close one, but a victory 
towards Cebu. Congratulations. Wow, that was an insane matchup. I'm telling you, nobody, as soon as that, I saw the names in the lobby, I was like, this is going to be a fun game of Valorant. Not only to us as casters, but to our viewers as well. And boy, oh boy, did Cebu and Lapu Lapu delivered. But not only them, everyone did. Everyone delivered. Liluan versus Argao, amazing matchup. Minglanilia versus Talisai, 32 rounds of Valorant. Mandawe versus Barili. Very quick and dominant performance by Mandawe. And of course, Cebu City versus Lapu Lapu. Close, but amazing matchup. We were treated by the Valorant gods this evening, nobody. And we are thankful for that. Thank you very much to the Valorant gods for giving us quality matches. This just goes to show how amazing our Cebu esports players are already. Who knows what more they have in store as we get into the Cebu esports arena's invitational Valorant tournament uh, ma next matches in the upcoming weeks, ladies and gentlemen. But you know who else we have to thank? Nobody, not just the Valorant gods, but our wonderful sponsors as well. Virginia Food Incorporated, Bio Agronica, Muning, Omega, and Dos Amigos. Thank you so much for making C CEA Invitationals possible thank you so much for supporting cea as well so we're done with all our four matchup today amazing amazing matchups like mentioned earlier argao versus liluan delivered minglanilla versus talisai 32 round mandawe versus barili insane show of dominance and lapu lapu versus Cebu. such an amazing matchup as well wow wow Wow, that is Cebu Sports, everybody. And this is day one of Cebu Esports Arena Invitational's Valorant Division. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, my name is Forward. And I am Nobody. And we are the voices of the battlefield for Cebu Esports Arena's Valorant Division. Uh, hoping and the goal always, of course, is to deliver the best content possible to you guys, the audience. Even through tactical difficulties, we do it best here in CEA. We'll see you on the next one. Peace out.